this boat, guys. Wow. And a gorgeous morning. Lots of whales out there. It is 100 yards from whales. Yes, sir. Captain of this ship. Whoa. This is crazy. It is a beautiful... Oh, man. <laughs> I am so excited. Look at how clear the water is, guys. Wow. Wow, wow. What is going on, guys? My dad and I have rented a boat today, and we are going out. We've rented it from Aloha Outdoors, and we are going out on the ocean. We've got trolling rods with us. We've got bottom uh, stuff with us. We got caught a whole octopus last night. We're gonna use for bait. It is gonna be a fantastic day out here. Very excited. I mean, does a morning get any more perfect than this? Perfectly sunny, cold. And I just have to say, you said we got the boat. That's not true. Asa got the boat. I'm along for the ride. It's the first time I think I've not been a captain of the boat when we've gone out. And I'm just kicking back and enjoying the day. So this is going to be great. Thank you, Asa. All right, guys, let's go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Look, there's a whale right there, straight dead ahead. Oh, that is cool. And another one? We're going to have to be careful. We have to go. There are a bunch of whales. Yeah, guys, we're going to have to be, uh, we're gonna be real careful with all these whales around. But the uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put out some trolling lines here. So uh, we got these pin reels. You can actually rent these with the boat. And uh, we got some lures here that we're going to throw out, some different trolling lures. So we'll have two of those out. And as we're headed to a spot where we actually want to bottom fish and barracuda fish, we're going to troll some of these. Hopefully we got a mahi-mahi or ono or tuna. So while we're going here, we're going to get these lines put out. This is the first one. Double hook, one right up close, one trailer. We kind of set up different color. One trailer hook, and one right underneath. The rat's nest, you're good. Guys, we just went through um, a bunch of flying fish scattered as we were uh, trolling along here, and that is a good sign. So maybe we're going through some uh, bait fish and stuff. So keep an eye out here. Oh, look, see those? See them? Oh, that's cool. Well, guys, I think we're going to be done trolling for a little bit, and we're trying bottom fishing. Nothing yet, but we will go back to the trolling in just a bit. Guys, we got whales. We had to shut off the engines. Actually, you only have to shift in neutral, but we shut off the engines um, uh, because they're really close. You, uh, whenever you get within 100 yards, you have to shift into neutral or shut off the boat. They are really close. Hey, Pops, come to the front. I think there might be, come to the front. I think there might be one under us. I can't, can't tell. But if you put it underwater, it might be able to capture it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, guys, we have them right under us. That's like a once in a lifetime thing. Cause you can't get within a hundred yards, you have to shut off your engines. But luckily the wind was just right. It blew us right over top of them. That is crazy, crazy cool. So what we've done is uh, we have got anything trolling, which is fine. It's a slow time of year. It's January, slow time of year to catch something on trolling. But, and we'll, we'll do some tr more trolling later, but uh, we're gonna drop some lines down and, uh, and get fishing here, do some bottom fishing now. All right. Oh, look how beautiful this water is. Reef fish is about 80 feet, I think. 
according to the old depth finder. Guys, check out how on the, you see how the, the, the shades of the water on this side is coral, on this side is sand, and there's actually more coral over there. So we're right in the highway, right between the coral, and that's where we found we catch the game fish like the ulua and uh, snapper and things like that more often is when we're fishing right in the highway. So we are right in a good zone here. Mm, we're right on a drop off. Got one. Got one. Good fish. Uh huh. Good fish. I, it's funny, I let it sink and that's when he took off. You mean you, you were just letting it? Yeah, because you know, our boat drifted right, a little bit. Right. So I'm going to make sure it's near the bottom. Let, right, let it down right. there and he bit then. Nice. Yes, guys. It's dark. It's a dark fish. It might. No. It better not be. It's a ras. It's actually a hogfish. Oh, it is. It's a hogfish. Nice. He left me my bait. That was nice that of him. real nice of him. Do you want to try eating a hogfish? They're kind of hard to clean. Are they? But they are edible. That's... Should we let him go? You know, we don't have to. We could wait for something more edible. But, uh... As long as we get something more edible. Yes. <laughs> Guys, look at that big nasty hogfish. I'm gonna let this guy go. That is a cool fish, Jason. That is cool though. First fish of the day, guys. Let him go. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. I was worried he might have a hard time getting down to the bottom. All right, got pops. Nice. My dad is his first fish of the day. Oh, it's a rass. Oh. Crazy. Crazy stuff. You never catch these. <laughs> there we go. We catch a lot of these guys. If you're new to my channel, we catch so many. These are just just pure bait thieves. Yep. Toothy little critters. Well, at least you got the skunk out of the boat for yep, you. Now we both have one. Yep, now Did you let's get, get the real fish. Yeah, let's just get better from here. Yep. Whoa, big fish. Oh. Big fish. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Whoa! That was a strong first run there. And it was just wait, it didn't like strike. It was just uh, this might be an uku because now it's coming up a little bit easier. Uh, that's what they do sometimes. They take off. Whoa, guys. Wow, guys. Just depending on how big he is, I might get the gaff this time. Hey, you never know. Might gaff our first fish. <laughs> So it's already down there oh, deep, I and then, love that sound. guys, this is oh, look at you. oh ho ho! Part of this whole thing is you gotta at least see it because that way, if the line does break, at least yeah, you knew what you lost. Or right? it throws oh, the man, hooker. He is really. Yeah, you want me to set that drag a little lighter? Or no, it's fine. It's. <laughs> oh, guys, this is what. As fishermen, this is what uh -huh. you. This is what not live for. live for might be an overstatement, but this is what you dream of. I'm <laughs> dying of curiosity. Oh, Pops, I think I think it's a papillo or a new lua. Guys, I think I have my, my, my personal oh, best here. Wow, 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 I think wow. I see blue. I think so. Yeah, I see the blue white kind of pretty pretty color. Oh, now that it's getting closer though, it doesn't look as wide. Looks like it might be thin like an uku. I don't know. It's too white, I think, for an uku. Well, yeah, if you got the belly up, then it could be an uku. That's true. Whatever it is, it's a good sized fish. What is that? No, I think I see a big forked tail. Yeah, I think it's an uku. Oh my gosh, Jesus. This is a good fish, man. Oh, dog. No. Oh, my oh gosh, it's a huge uku! uku. Alright, I get the gaff because we're gonna keep this guy. Oh Guys, look at this fish! This is this is my biggest snapper. Oh my goodness! Oh get the hurry before you come on, stay there. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh Yes! Oh look at that! Oh my goodness! Oh my gosh! 
Oh, <laughs> oh, look at the size. Guys, this is a gray snapper. Oh my word. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I got this is the idea. This is the biggest. Oh my gosh. By far. Here, let me get the hook out. Oh, I'm shaking. <laughs> I'll get you the <laughs> Guys, look at that fish. we're gonna weigh this dude. Oh gray my gosh. Gray snapper. Our that favorite is... fish to eat. <laughs> my goodness. Woo! I guess we're gonna kill this big dude real fast. Put him out of his misery here. I mean, just look at this. I cannot believe it. All right, guys, okay, we are going we go. to weigh this fish up. Oh, there's my scale. This will be the biggest fish this scale. You're gonna, ever you're gonna measure him first? Okay, measure him lengthwise. Twitch a little bit. So this fish is 30. And you're not even to the tip of, of his mouth. It's like he wants to bite. Yeah. A little over 31 inches. Nice. Since the boat's moving, we keep getting It's mixed. over 10 though. It's over 10. I'd over 10. about 10 and a half. Yeah, it, keep, it, it stays at 10 and a half the most. Wow. Yeah, we're not going to get a fish reading. Guys, the, the fish is swinging too much on the boat, so it's not giving us a, an official. But it's between 10 and a half and 11 yep. pounds. Wow. Very nice. <laughs> Wow. Smash is my personal best, oh, like three gosh. pounds. <laughs> wow. Woo. Nice that, job, son. Nice cool. job. But guys, I was, I was, uh, I just dispatched my gray snapper and my dad hooks up on a fish. What do we got here, Pops? Oh, but it's another one of my favorites. The one I'm cl classic me. <gasps> Pops. Oh, oh no, it spit up something. I thought there was something, that shadow. Oh, I did too. I thought something was falling, it, but it, it just... spit up? It was big, whatever. It, it spit up, up a bunch of like, I mean. a cloud. It's what, guys, this is one of those, uh, another hogfish. Oh, this is the, I think it's a, the female version. It's like, right. they're different colors. I looked it up one time. Yeah, that, that's a female hogfish. The, the red one I caught earlier is the male. Okay. Oh, there she goes. Oh, perfect. Quick, Quick release. release. <laughs> <laughs> we have enough meat for our barbecue oh, today. All right, my friends, the fish is bled out. We're going to skip all the blood and guts part of this thing. Let me dip it one more time in the water. And, uh, you know, we have this cutting board right here, but to be honest, it almost is too small. All right, guys, what we're going to do is since it's so hot out here, we're going to, uh, I'm going to flay this guy up and get the fillets in the cooler before I continue fishing. But my dad has his line down there, and so we might get interrupted at any point here. You cut great. Look at that. Big filet of meat right there. <laughs> Cleaned it. Oh my goodness, we're gonna get so many steaks off this pop. <laughs> and there is the other beautiful filet. I feel like we left some cheek meat as well. Oh, you know what? That slid right in. Let's see if we get the cheek meat out. Pops, I think I'm just going to throw this overboard for the sharks. What do you think? We got all the fillets on. Can't think of any it's too big to bring back for crab traps, but a little shark food there, crab food. And we're just going to separate the meat from the skin there. Guys, look at that. We got... <laughs> Steak for the grill. A little get the scales off. Gray snapper steak. Well, that is go big or go home. I'm gonna try something I haven't tried yet. Good knit. It's a whole octopus tentacle. We're gonna see. I'm gonna jig on, him a, on a jig head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah, lead, sorry. big heavy lead yeah. jig head. I'm gonna that put is... him about five, ten feet up off the bottom and see what happens. All right, <laughs> guys. I'm gonna put a leak. To this shirt in the description below. It is the lightest, lightweight UV shirt I've ever worn. It protects me from the sun all day long. All I have to do is worry about my bald head putting sunscreen on. I mean, seriously, this is the lightest material uh, UV shirt I've ever worn. It's keeping me cool all day long. I'll put a link to it in the description. If you guys live in a sunny place or you plan on coming to Hawaii and doing this yourself and you're out in the hot sun fishing all day, this, this is seriously, this is an amazing shirt <laughs> right here. You strip your face green. Whoa. Yeah. All right, I am retied. Oh, shoot! Just didn't connect. 
loads on. It just... uh -huh. Alrighty, my friends, we come to the cooking part, and how are we gonna cook on the boat? By the way, no bananas on board. Good rule. We open this up, and in here, we move our trash over that way. Trash over that way. And in here, we have a grill. Check it out. We pull it out, and it goes Shazam. Oops. Hold on. Technical difficulties. There we go. Shazam. Oh, not quite. Shazam. Right in there. The propane is on, and our little grill, just like so. <laughs> This is fun. Guys, if you want to come out here and have this same experience, you can. I'll put a link in the top of the description to the company that rents out these boats, Aloha Outdoors. They are the one that sponsors sponsored this video. They provide trolling stuff. If you want to try to catch Mahi Mahi and Wahoo and all that stuff, a grill on the boat. You can go whale watching. You can go turtle watching. You can go and even snorkel Molokini, the crater island over there. They have a tie up for this boat. Where, whoa, whoa, whale, whale, whale. Oh my goodness. I literally was looking right at. I don't know if I got that. Oh, and there's the baby. Oh my word. Oh my God. Sometimes when they do that, they start a little bit, you know? Guys, and he, look at this whale watching. You guys get to experience this too. This is the way to enjoy Maui. I was looking right at it when she came out. I just happened to be looking at that spot. Anyway, link in the top of the description to Aloha Outdoors. Check them out and enjoy this yourselves. We're gonna keep the camera out here just in case the mom jumps again. We can get the whole thing. Guys, I just realized I had my 360 camera on, which looks all around 360. So we'll be able to see, guys, we'll see the whale jump. We got, we got her going. Just gotta let this thing heat up. It's gonna be a little bit difficult in this wind, but uh, we'll get it. Hopefully, get it nice and hot. In the meantime, let's prepare the fish. All right, guys, we have a problem here. We um, we can start the grill, but we cannot keep the grill going because of this wind. It's winter time, even though it's really nice outside. It's Maui's winter, and so the winds pick up every afternoon like this. And so um, it just keeps blowing out our grill. We can't get it hot. We can't even keep it going, actually. What we're going to have to do, I was really looking forward to a cook on the boat, but we kind of waited too long. We fished too long. We should have fished, or we should have cooked while it was calm. My bad. Um, anyway, what, what we can do is we can bring the fish back to the home, back to the house still, and cook it up there. So we're just going to finish out the rest of our time uh, fishing, and uh, we'll definitely troll on the way back to maybe get something big on the way in. All right, back to fishing for a little while longer. I'm actually cast up this side. You got some? Yep, I do. Whoa. Whoa. I was just about to call. I was like, well, Pops, I think. Yep, oh, my. I got a fish. You got a big one. You pops, guys, my dad has something big. I got to reel my line in. I had no bait. I was stolen. My bait was... Mate, do I have to get the gaff, you think? Or? No, I don't think so. He's not doing what yours did. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is always the fun part, is uh, yeah, the seeing what's, what, it, what it is. It's, it's Anuku. It's Anuku. I'll be dang. Nice. All right. Second one of the day. All right. Oh, there we go. Oh, hold your fishing rod if you want. Yeah, you <laughs> Lift him in. Nice, a little tyke brother there. That's a good fun. <laughs> that is still fun. I think we let him back in, don't you think? All righty. A lot of meat. We do have a lot of a lot of big steaks. All right, guys. Here we go. Well, good time out here, guys. I uh, I wish I wouldn't have gotten greedy with the fishing. Wish I would have cooked earlier because it was calm earlier. I could have could have cooked, but the afternoon trade winds came up. So anyway, next time we'll just have to come back out here and do it again. There you go. There you go. So my dad is letting out the lines. We'll show back. Maybe we'll get something. Oh my gosh! Whoa! 
you oh, oh my gosh. Guys, 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 we just we had to stop the motor car. Look at this man. He's going around. He's over. Look at him. Look at him. Oh my gosh. Guys, we were just driving along. We just Yes, yes it is. Whoa! They are cruising. Perhaps I have a better idea. Use this one. So it has sound. And then I'll get my big camera out. Look at that! Oh my word! That was cool. I mean, uh -huh. that, like you say, whether we got it on video or not, that was, that was sweet. Well guys, that was, uh, that was cool. We, they, they jumped just like one or two times a piece and that was it. So by the time we got the cameras on, um, we actually didn't really get that well, but that was still amazing. All right, guys, we are in the kitchen again here. Um, I was disappointed, obviously, when we couldn't use the grill. However, when we got back to the dock, the owner of Aloha Outdoors, or one of the owners of Aloha Outdoors, uh, the guy who picked up our boat and cleaned it all off and took care of everything for us, it was really crazy, actually, to take in a boat and not have to do any of the work. Very, very cool. But uh, anyway, he gave me this great idea. Um, he said Gray Snapper is his favorite sashimi. And I thought, wait a sec, I have never done any kind of sushi on my channel that, that I've made. I thought, I'm gonna do poke, or poke. I don't know how people say it, but the Hawaiian word is poke, which is basically just fish. Well, you know, I'll just show you guys. I'll just show you guys. Anyway, I'm about to make sushi for the first time on my channel. This is a pretty easy recipe. This is, I'm gonna do it a traditional Hawaiian way, and I'll just show you guys. The first thing we're doing is, I'm just gonna use one filet for this because I've never done it before, so we'll, We'll just try one filet. We'll see if we like it, and if we like it, we can do more. But uh, I never do big batches of anything when we're in the uh, experimental stage. So we got this here. Got to cut the skin off. These are the pieces that we were going to do on the half shell. You see, like, the thick skin there. And then I'm just going to kind of dice this up. The, um, yeah, okay, we're just going to make, I'm just going to cube it up. Nice little chunks here. I'm pretty sure that you see how they're like, a, there's red stuff here in the meat. I think you want to cut all that away. The only reason why I think I know that is because I believe I've watched a YouTube video before on a guy making sushi, like it was in detail. And I just remember that part, like cut the red stuff away. You don't want to be eating that, I think. I'll probably make some mistakes here. I looked up a basic poke recipe, but uh, that was it. I didn't dive too in depth. We're just gonna throw those cubes in the bowl right, like so and that's all we're gonna make for now since this is just this is the experimental batch. Next we're going to get a new cutting board here. Take just a little bit of green onion and I mean just a little bit since we don't have very much little bits there. We'll save the rest of that for when we make the big batch if indeed this turns out good. Just throw some of that in there. Next, we're gonna take an onion. We just need a little tiny bit of the onion. Add that to our fish, just a little sprinkling. Next, we'll add just a tiny bit of sesame oil. I was told just, just go very light. Some shoyu or soy sauce. Be a little bit more generous with that. And some crushed red pepper there. This was optional, they said, but you know me, I like spice. So I thought I'm gonna add a little bit to that. Stir it all around there. And we have our very first test batch of sushi. All right, Pops, my first attempt. Oh so I brought you some water in case you choke. <laughs> You need to cleanse your wow. palate. All right, sounds mm -hmm. good. Let's uh, say a little sure. quick prayer real quick. We need it for this. All righty, here we go. So what do we have here? Um, we this have is our gray snapper. Uku. All right. Poke. Uku poke. Uku poke. I'm gonna grab a little bit of onion. I think I'll do that too. Have some pepper. Have all the elements on it. Bon Cheers. Appetit. What 
you think? Mm. I like. You like it? Oh, yeah. I really like it too. Yeah, I was gonna wait till you spoke first, guys. Yeah. I didn't want you to be influenced by my boat. Mm. I really like it. Do this on the boat next time. Mm -hmm. Do it while we're out there on the boat, like just bring the stuff with us, the ingredients. Really simple ingredients. Mm -hmm. Success. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Mm. Yeah. It was a fun day out on the water pops. That was. I enjoyed that. That was amazing. What is going on, my friends? Welcome to eating only what I catch for three days. Another Hawaii edition. All I did was get a double quarter pounder, deluxe, add cheese, add bacon. I'm gonna need this for what lies ahead. Oh, that was the 1500 calories I needed to start this challenge. I do have some fries left, but I just don't have the heart, the stomach, I should say, to uh, finish them. I can't eat them though once this timer starts. I will save them though, because I might, I don't know, maybe they could be good chum bait or something like that. All right, let's start the timer right now. Here we go. Can't eat anything else. Uh, only what I catch for the next 72 hours. So here's the setup, folks. I'll run through this real fast. Got all my fish and stuff in here. I've got this. We might, might be catching crawfish later. I'm at least going to go freshwater fishing. Um, oops. Wind keeps trying to blow this down. As you can see, I've got Scott fries scattered everywhere. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of a windy, blustery day out here. But this is a beautiful, beautiful spot to camp. Anyway, I've got this for crawdads. First aid kit. Hammock. Sinkers for shore fishing. A machete might come into play for like coconuts or any fruit or if I need to cut down trees. The old dive bag. I've got here a bunch of fresh water so I can uh, rinse stuff down or if I need to like take a shower. A spear, probably be spearing some stuff later. A bunch of fishing rods and reels there of various sizes. And then a uh, little fish net, maybe catch some bait in that or catch some to eat. Some crab rings, don't know how those are gonna come into play later. And uh, rod holders, a cooler with ice in it for hopefully the catch I'm gonna be catching a little bit and some water and a beautiful beach to fish from so this is the camping spot and I'm the only one camping here right now somebody even left a little metal grate there so if I want to uh, yeah look cook up a little something over a fire but check out this gorgeous beach here I'm kind of on a wild side of the island Look at all the rocks stuff. It's not very developed along this north shore. If there is anything, usually it's just like some personal houses, but no resorts or anything like that. It's a way, few, way fewer people. And I'm hoping to be able to like catch some like bigger fish or more unusual fish or something like this on this side of the island. And uh, I have some snorkeling to do later. It's just gonna be three days of having fun out here and uh, just make it up as I go. You know, what's funny. <laughs> I actually kind of feel like taking a nap right now after that huge meal. Uh, what I'm going to start off with is a little spoon. Um, and I'm just going to start close. I'm going to fish off this beach and around these rocks here with some little baits and just see if I can get something for supper, something to throw in the cooler. It's going to make me feel so much better. You know, then I can kind of relax and like focus on something more uh, difficult and bigger to catch. If I had like a little goat fish in the cooler, that would be real nice. Interestingly enough, with my water supply here, it's actually leaking. So that lot of good that thing does me if you can't. I guess I'll just have to turn it over. All right, I'm gonna close this so nobody bothers with stuff. And look at this gorgeous place I have here. I mean, I cannot believe I found this spot. This is just fantastic. A couple people down there. Otherwise, the beach is uh, pretty much empty. First cast of the challenge. I think it's low tide right now. I don't know if that's good or bad. This is so beautiful. Man. Got one, got one, guys. I got a fish, I got a fish. Oh, it just came off, it just came off. That was the first fish. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Oh, man. 
Dang, that could have been dinner. That could have been dinner. Guys, look at this. Look at this. I didn't even notice it for the first few casts. We got limpets or opihi on these rocks. Look at all of them. I'll have to get my knife and peel some off. These are good to eat. The little shells there, the little creatures in the shells. I'll come back. Um, I want to focus on fish. Look, there's another one right there. I want to focus on fishing. Those aren't like a ton of meat <laughs> or calories, but they're, they're something. So I've got a lot. I, I have a feeling these rocks on this side are all just covered in them since this is kind of the wild side. Got him, got him, got him. Oh, what is, oh it's a big, it's a big uh, needlefish. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, well, it's actually, it's a coronet fish. It's the same family as a needlefish. The coron Look at that, guys. Huh. Well, that, that was exciting. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to eat this, actually. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, have I, I don't, you know, I think I ate one of these once, but I think that was pre-YouTube days. And to be honest, I can't remember even how it tasted. Well, there is first catch of the challenge. That is excellent. Hey, you chickens, clear out. Wait a second. Chicken catch and cook. Huh. Now that's nice. Oh, they ate all the fries. Ah. Oh. Now there's an idea, guys. Hook is out, and uh, we'll kill this guy real quick with a stone. There we go, on the ice. Put the water back in there, which is really sanitary. All right, let's go get something else. Yeah, look at all these chickens. I'd have to make some sort of <laughs> chicken trap. back to the same spot got one got one that's a little one just a little oh he just came off it just came off it was like a little black fish of some sort got him got him fish on fish on what do we got what do we got a goat fish goat fish yes yes oh barely hooked barely hooked careful on these rocks oh this one i don't know if this one's gonna be a keeper oh this one's gonna be oh no that's Probably, oh, that is close. Oh man, ladies and gentlemen, that is so beautiful. It is so close. Look how dark that one is. It's like dark purple, kind of black, and the purple sheen to it. That is pretty. I have one of these measuring apps. Oh, this has it at nine inches. Sweet, I thought it might be keeper. Yeah, nine inches. All right, excellent. Thank you, Lord. Guys, we got dinner right off the bat. That is what I'm talking about. Yes, yes, yes. What a great way to start off. All right, my friends. Now that I have a couple fish for dinner, I have another plan. I'm gonna call up my dad and uh, See if he wants to go octopus hunting. And then I'm also gonna take this uh, goat head, goat fish head, and I'm gonna put it on the bottom and try to catch some crabs with it. Look at that, guys. Only an hour and a half in, and I already got two fish. All right, so now I'm gonna load all my stuff back up, actually, and leave this camping spot. Hope nobody comes to take it, but that is kind of a risk I'm running here. And it's a Monday, so I'm hoping nobody's going to come down to camp on a Monday. I'm going to go find me ancient and uh, see if he wants to snorkel for octopus. I can really use some of those for eating and for bait. Hey, hey, how's it going? All right, guys, we are down at a beach here, and uh, one of our little favorite octopus reefs is right out here. Looks like we're having a good, clear day. Oh. 
So crabbing in Hawaii is always a little hit or miss. They don't have like big populations of crabs like uh, when you go for Dungeness crab on the Oregon coast or something like that where there are just, you know, thousands of them everywhere. But they do have some really cool ones, uh, Samoan crabs, white crabs, Kona crabs, and uh, I thought I'd leave it all in the sand there to see if I could draw them out. They usually just live in the sand and you put a piece of bait down and if they're nearby, they'll smell it and pop out. However, this Huma Huma Nuka Nuka Apua found it first and uh, enjoyed <laughs> all of their chompers. That's cool. Um, enjoyed chowing down on a fellow reef fish, which is kind of disturbing when you think about it. But he was enjoying it. And then you see in the background another humu was looking at it. A little bit different species. Or maybe that's just like the female type. Sometimes they're both the same species. Just a slight pattern difference you can see on the side there. I'm not actually sure. There's so many different types of trigger fish in Hawaii. But <laughs> it's cool to see them go with the waves. So we'll leave that and go back to my dad and I, octopus hunting and after only about 10 minutes I spotted a giant one on the outside of the rocks I don't know if it was sunning itself or just waiting for a little fish to go by maybe stalking that fish that you just saw swim off um, but it was very well camouflaged in fact when I get up close here look at how it make it's making its skin spiky just like the seaweed that is incredible. The Lord really knew what he was doing when he made those. So, you can see it there. I swam down to grab it. And look at the color change right before I grabbed it. Like, it knows the jig is up. Watch this. Boom. Turns white. Tries to ink me. I thought that was incredible. And then, it went right for my forearm. It wrapped itself around me. I knew it was trying to do. It was going to try to bite me. And one that big is going to have a sizable beak on. I did not want to get bitten. Sometimes the smaller ones don't hurt very bad, uh, but I did not want to test it out with that one. This is the biggest octopus I personally had ever caught. So back to the crab bait. Uh, Leather Jack came around and uh, was checking it out. Probably could smell it. And then you see in the background there, check out the long coronet fish cruising along. That's so pretty. All the variety of life down there. But... I could not get a crab to come around for it. Interesting idea to put a piece of bait on the bottom and then fish around it because it does attract quite a bit of attention. Like put a big like fish head and then fish with like maybe a smaller hook around it. So I thought I'd take it and set it down here. My dad and I had spotted a mora eel. So I thought let's see how the eel reacts to it. And I didn't know if we'd have to swim away and like wait five minutes or anything like that. Uh, no, we didn't even have a chance to swim away, and the eel came out after it. Look how it has, like, a hooked jaw there. Or it's messed up or something. It's, it's cool looking, but I think that's from probably where a fisherman hooked it. And that's the scar that's left. Look at that. Just pulls it right off. And then go straight to swallowing it. And this is the view from above. It just whoosh. Swallows the fish head whole. What a time. Whoa. That was cool, guys. That was really cool. That is a lot of meat right there, folks. Uh, thank you for uh, thank you for helping me out there. My well, pleasure. We appreciate it. It was a fun Very little cool. session. Wow, cool. this is a, turned out to be a great first day for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you're gonna eat well. Uh huh. You can't what? I can't tell if they're empty or not. I think that one is for sure. Okay. Yeah, that one looks. Oh, there might be some hermit crab in that one. I can yeah. think and see a little white. Yeah, if there's a hermit crab, I'll oh, throw him back for sure. He's trying to grab. He's putting his little tentacle out. 
Oh look, he's gonna <laughs> try to make an escape. He's feeling his way around. That's actually kind of creepy. All right, my friends, we're gonna take this back to camp and uh, I'm gonna get cooking. I think that's good. All right, guys, nobody took my camping spot. And in fact, there is uh, still nobody here, which is pretty sweet. All right, so let's get set up again. That is one like downside to truck camping is you have to like pack everything back up. Um, and you're kind of packing and unpacking a lot, basically, whenever you truck camp. All right, folks, I'm looking around for like something that I could use to cook on a little better than just a rock, small rock. Like sometimes you have campers here, like people leave boards. Now this is a little lesson. Look at these big trees here. Look at that branch that crashed down. Like you need to be careful tent camping. Holy mackerel, that could kill somebody. Oh look, a bunch of chickens over here. Folks, we're um we're gonna be chicken hunting here soon. What is this is exactly, or not quite exact. That's heavy though. Hmm. Kind of really heavy. Is there something else? You know what? I am gonna haul this over. Uh, take the time. And get the ace videos backpack out which has all my cooking stuff here love the uh, olive drab color ace videos logo on there you guys need yourselves one of these link in the description my little portable cook setup here had this thing for years and years not the canisters you go through the canisters but and voila I think what I'm gonna do first is cut up the coronet fish. That's gonna be the craziest thing. I already cleaned. Uh, it's gonna be easy just cutting up the old octopus. Man, for first day, I got a lot of good stuff. I am very, very pleased with how this has turned out. Okay, I'm just gonna start. Uh, you know, I'm gonna fillet it like a regular fish. As if it were a wide-bodied fish. cuts really easily like whoa okay I'm like on along like the spine well, that's interesting I wonder if I could just peel the meat off what look at that a strip and I don't feel any bones in it and it looks good wow you know let's do that again <laughs> it's like cutting through butter. Look at that. That first piece was way easier, but there it is. Another piece. I don't feel any bones in it. This is crazy. And you know what? I think I'm going to save this, so I'll throw that skin out. But this will come in handy for catching crabs or something. I'm going to really try to conserve all my creatures, even like the guts and stuff of everything. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to eat... Oh, look, he has a small tentacle, unfortunately. That must have been gotten bitten off. So I'm going to eat uh, two, two tentacles tonight. And I'm going to save him for bait and eating. Hopefully turn him into a big fish. Don't want him to drop in the sand. Oh, that's going to be delicious. And sometimes I like to peel the skin off my octopus when I'm eating, but uh, not on this three-day challenge. And the goatfish, which I had filleted earlier. That was crazy, that eel was. So there is the dinner that I caught today. A little oil in there. I caught the oil at Safeway. Whew. They usually have a good flock of oil jars roaming around. All right, using my first cast seasoning, the best seasoning in the world. I have the Ace Videos backpack and seasoning linked in the description. 
Uh, I'm just going to do this kind of a quickie job here. Just pour it kind of all over the food. This is just uh, this is just putting calories in my body. Not worried about anything fancy. Some salt. The first day is always uh, pretty easy, even if I didn't catch anything. But this is a really nice catch, and I'm set up. I feel like uh, well, I don't want to get too cocky. Uh, we'll just say I'm I'm glad I caught an octopus for like bait and everything else and yeah you know that i'm just going to put it at that every time i think that things are about to start going well and i'm going to have an easy challenge it always turns out not so cornet fish on the bobby <gasps> well look at this there's a cat there's a cat hey kitty kitty hey kitty 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 you smell some food there are stray cats and stray chickens all over Hawaii, guys. If you've never been here before, that is actually completely normal. I mean, the island is covered in chickens and cats because they have, like, no natural enemies. All right. Oh, look how the cornet fish just falls apart. This is excellent. Oh, wait, you know what I need? Stick them back on there. You know, all the modern conveniences of a survivalist. Yes. I'll bet the cat might enjoy some of this. We'll see. I guess cornet fish is just falling apart. It seems like a really, really soft fish. This might be fantastic. I might discover something here that's amazing. I'm gonna sit the goat fish on there. He'll have to cook a little bit longer. Oh, there's the cat. Yeah, she she's smelling the air. He or she, I don't know which yet. Smelling the air. Let me make up a little cat platter here. Gonna try to get some pieces that don't have as much like seasoning on them. Look at that, huh? Look at that. You want some? Oh, you're kind of a trembly little fellow. All right, it's okay. The cat's literally shaking. Oh, look! Oh, there you. Oh, there we go. We got action. Oh, dropped it in the sand. You know that's why I put it on. The... That's a skinny cat. That uh, that cat is uh, not doing well. What should we name the cat, folks? I just adopted a cat on this camping trip. I'm thinking Oliver. Has kind of olive eyes, olive colored eyes. Oliver sounds good to me. And that is a hungry and really, really skinny starved cat. I might be eating a few less calories this trip. You know what, let's just go for it with the octopus. And uh, seasoned and ace first catch eating them. Drop it all on there. Hey, you. You want more? Yeah, I got more for you. Hey, there you go. Oh, don't run away. All right, Oliver, here you go. Here's something else for you. Enjoy. better than Miss Piggy. Miss Piggy will never eat my cooking. All right, I'm gonna try this. Some cornet fish. I did eat this once long ago, but I was like 10 years old. We caught one, we're like, let's try it. And I say we have, I have three brothers. And uh, my dad played it, if I remember, and I think we tried to eat it. I have no idea the details of that, but that I do remember trying to eat one of these. So basically the first time. Wow. That's amazing. That's a really good fish. They school up. I had the chance of catching a lot of these sometime. Like, if you can get on school with like 10 of them, they will all bite like a spoon, like a silver spoon. This is a great, great source of food right here. Toss. Whoa, hey, ho, oh, hey. That did not mean to do that. <laughs> All right, fried octopus. Maybe a little over fried. Fresh caught. With skin on, it's gonna be a little chewier, but I want all the calories. It tastes very seafoody, very salty, and just like a strong, strong seafood flavor, but I like it what I need. What a beautiful evening. Ma'am.
zip. Next time, definitely going to tenderize it. I am going to get Oliver a big piece of octopus here, and let's see if he likes it. Getting more and more used to me. Yeah, chew on that for a little while. Yeah. Take that. Enjoy. All right. This is uh, utility mode. But if I want party mode, that's an annoying party. All right. Anyway, I have here a sleeping bag loaned to me by my friend Mike. Check out his channel in the description. He lives on Maui. Thank you, Mike. Really thick sleeping bag. This thing is just like thick. It's like a mini mattress built within a sleeping bag. Thank you so much, Mike, for this. Well, my friends, it was a successful first day. Super happy with it, and I'm set up for tomorrow. I actually don't know what the plan is. We'll just have to wake up, and whatever kind of hits me. Um, and it basically, a lot of a lot of it's uh, based on the conditions. Uh, that's what I decide I'll do. So, until then, see you guys tomorrow. I'm going to Chick Fil A. Oh, was this still on? Here, a little windy again, kind of like yesterday, but uh, just incredible. Check it out. I got a brand new Ultra Mini cook setup. I actually got this at a Ace Hardware a couple weeks ago. Teeny tying frying pan and a little pot, and it's like perfect for making like a little cup of coffee. If you guys are members, you've seen this already. If you want to check out a library of members only videos. I'll put a link to that in the description. With this small of a pot, it really gets hot fast. This is cool. And you know, I have here something. Now I kind of splurged. I went, cr well, I went crazy actually. These were so expensive. It's Hawaii Selection Kona. Yeah, Kona coffee. Very famous coffee here in Hawaii, but so delicious. And uh, this is pretty expensive. Look at this. Guys, 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 look at this. Look at all these chickens. They're all just like waiting expectantly for more food. They just walked over while I was talking. You know that, that kind of dark hen in the back? She's kind of plump. Hmm. Interesting. I'm going to take the, uh, I'm going to pour it actually in this because I kind of want to see, oh yeah. Looks like any other instant coffee. The smell is great. Look at him. Look at him. And then all the ones over there too. Huh. They're pretty comfortable with people around. Alright. Some nice hot water there. Just gonna drink it straight out of this. A chicken breakfast sounds amazing. All right, I have an idea. I know this is a crab ring, but maybe we can turn it into a chicken ring. This may not work, they may be too fast. I might be kind of just fooling myself here. But if I can get them distracted with fries. Oh, shoot. I think I only had one shot at that. Yeah, look, there she goes. Oh man, you know, I should have been ready anyway. I need a, um, need my machete, because uh, I throw it on them. Yeah, that's gonna be my plan next time. And then, there's a way to twist chickens' heads off, but I don't, um, I don't know that method. I, I don't wanna mess it up, so. All right, well, I'll try that again later. All right, they ran away, of course. I'll, I'll try that maybe even with like another group of chickens. Check this out. While I was just looking around, admiring the scenery. Look at all the chickens up there. Found a coconut. Now it does look 
It does look a little old. This might be a dud. This may be have been out in the ocean a long time. Let's open it and see. I have nothing to lose. I right, just try to open this thing. Ugh, get a huge rock. Ooh. Just there. That's a dud. There's black. Shoot. They're too old and they look like that. Man, I thought I was having coconut for breakfast. All right, so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna try to catch a little fish for breakfast. And then I brought with me a knife. And I'm gonna try to get some of those limpets. And I'm gonna stick them right in here because that would be so nice to at least have a few of those. And then just be able to put them right here and like cook them up. Scrape some of those off the rocks. I think the waves ate at the beach even more last night. It was not, like look at all this like exposed coral. That's interesting. All right, let's try to catch some breakfast. First cast of the day. Now oh, check it out. Got some limpets right here. Now, there are some regulations. Shout out to Isaac for loaning me his knife, he's a big fan of the channel. He lives on Hawaii and uh, I saw him at a little get together and he loaned me this and I made a little notch on the handle, if you guys can see that. And that's an inch and a quarter and these have to be at least inch and a quarter long in shell length for them to like be keepers. This guy has a lot of seaweed on him. But uh, I've made that notch on there so I can kind of measure them real fast and that one is definitely big enough. That one is big enough. That one is big enough. I don't even have to measure that one. All right, let's uh, flip some of these off here. You just have to slide your knife under real fast. Oops, a little out of practice. There we go. And that's all it is. It's just a little morsel of uh, meat in there, but they're very tasty. Good little survival food. Yeah, so you can slide it under quickly. I don't have to scrape the seaweed off that guy at first. See, like all oh, these ones here are too small, but this is a good keeper. Let's go whoop, just like that. Oh, ho, ho. this rock is covered. These are big ones here. Bam. Oops. Whoa. Oh, there it is right there. Look at that. Oh, that is a huge one. Oh, that's a Mongo one there. Look at that. They're just like these little snails. Oh, hey, come out. There we go. Yeah, see how much easier that second one was? All right, folks, how about just in between 30 and 40 in there? That is a good, oh, probably get these last four. Oh, another big one right here. Huge shout out to Isaac for let me use his knife for this three-day challenge. I'm going to return it to him and then he can use it. I'd love to find like a papaya tree somewhere. This is so beautiful. Oh, look at these tide pools. This is so cool. I love this kind of thing. Looks like some rain clouds are kind of forming. Might have to find shelter somewhere. All right, my friends, unfortunately, this is breakfast. I'm so hungry. This is starting to get hard now because I'm feeling a little weak. Ah, tasty little breakfast here. This should heat up fast. I'm actually gonna go for a different strategy here. I'm gonna pour the ocean water in this shallow pan and I'm gonna kind of steam these guys you know what I brought with me I just thought of this mm, yeah shrimp and crab boil garlic butter so what a little flavored water I think should be in order mm -hmm. yeah these might be fabulous in little flavored water ah, we got a nice little boil a little steam going here let's grab these guys I think I'll put them just kind of face down in the water there They stick to the side of the cup sometimes and make it uh, hard to get. 
there we go. Let's let them cook just, just for a minute or two. Oh, they're becoming detached from their shells. So you can see that one there. Um, yeah, it's just like a little, kind of like an oyster, mini oyster. Even though this seems weird, this is actually really fun. This is what I like to do, strangely enough. I'm having a ball. I actually had a local Hawaiian guy tell me his son likes to eat them raw. So, all right, let's try the little snails here. Just pop them in like popcorn. If you don't think about the fact that you're eating a snail, the flavor is actually good here, <laughs> truly. It's just kind of a mind game of getting over that. It'd be like if you're eating horse or something, you know, you might be like, I can't get it down, even though there's nothing wrong with the flavor. Just the idea of eating horse meat sounds awful. And the idea of eating snails, in my mind, sounds awful. But the taste is fine. It's actually good. Counting them up, I think I ate about 50. 50 there. Whew. I am full of snail. <laughs> Throw those out. Well, that was, uh, I was, uh, it was not bad. Not bad. Better than nothing. Let's put it that way. All right, what do I do next? I've got our chicken friends over here just chilling. And I would just love to get a wild chicken to eat. I don't know if it could be this simple, but you never know. Just gonna cover this little loop of string with sand and then pull it back to here and then get my fries. So close. Yeah, it needs to be heavier. I, I gotta figure out something else. All right, you know what? Here is my new plan. I'm going to clean up everything and load all my stuff up. And let's go for a little drive down the coast. I've have not been along the road down there, and it just winds and winds and winds. And um, maybe I can find like a little jungly area. Maybe find some fruit trees. I don't know. Just find anything. Let's just explore. How many giant trevally and like big fish and sharks live along here because like nobody spear fishes it if you could find some way to get down like you'd have to camp for sure because all the effort to get down there um but i don't know maybe maybe something i'll do one day there's like a big grassy area down there huh oh, so that's just somebody's house they have like goats and stuff down there what what is this place i want to live here 
There's the residence. There's their driveway back there. Oh man, can you? I, I, that house probably is so expensive. Such an exclusive spot like that. <laughs> Look how narrow this road is. I'm literally driving like five miles an hour. Kind of terrifying. Look at that though. Can you imagine living in one? There's. I didn't see the second house because of the angle. But can you imagine living down there? Look at that beautiful little church. Look at this, a parking spot. Right, like the best spot right here. May have found a stream here. So I just saw some people go up a hiking trail there. Ladies and gentlemen, there are crawdads in Hawaii. And um, this might be a little stream to find some. Look at it. Oh, and the water's fairly, I mean, it's not super clear, but it's clear enough to see something. I'm gonna do a quick, like, kind of look in the stream first before I get all my stuff out and kind of commit to this. Golly, this is cool. Oh, guys, I see a giant shrimp. Guys, in Hawaii, there are these huge Tahitian shrimp. And I see, it. wait, I think I see a second one. Guys, giant shrimp. Oh, this is so good. Um. Oh, okay, okay. So there are literally like massive freshwater shrimp in Hawaii. I didn't know how common they were. If you just, and I just like walked up and there was one right there. All right, folks, I have here a net in a bucket um, and I need a piece of octopus. Use my machete for this. Just like whack a piece off. I've never caught one of these shrimp before. Let's give it a go. This might be a little bit of a learning curve here. I've seen guys um, who they either spear them or they like lure them in with some sort of piece of bait, kind of like I do crawdads back at home. I don't know if this is going to work. But let's try it. I wonder if I could just get my spear and spear them. Let's try that. All right, I see a shrimp back there. I'm just going to try to go for it. Oh, look, he's over there. He got away. But he's right there. Let me see if I can get him. Oh, a little to the left. We do have one though. <laughs> These guys are fast. They're not like crawdads. Um, what I need is like the three prong. And I did not bring, I just brought this. Oh, I wish I had a three prong with me. Yeah, big glob of octopus. Guys, I'm gonna use a crab ring. And I'm just gonna like put the bait in the middle of the crab ring. And when they come for it, I'm just gonna pull it up real fast. Well, I haven't found any crawdads yet, but I found this big pool. I have to imagine there are a lot of shrimp in here. All right, let's uh, throw that right there. There we go. Well, I'll just watch it now. Guys, I see one. I see one. Oh, I see two. Oh, how did he get out? I got a rock. I had a big one in there, man. That was a huge. I gotta be quicker than that. Seriously. There is a Mongo one in there. Oh, that thing is huge. They can just slip right out. Guys, that shrimp is a monster. Like, they're so quick. They can just get out of it. Maybe if I'm like directly over top of it, I'll be able to just like pull up super fast. My friends, I totally forgot I had these. I brought these all the way to Hawaii. I kind of just thought of them as minnow nets, but they're not. They're anything nets. Look at these. Bam. Just like that. Now, it may take them a little bit because the shrimp are so giant to find their way in, but let's see if I just get right over top of it and pull straight up if I can get one of these. Oh, the, st the string snapped. Oh, that was a fail. All right, there's no way I'm going to get these guys. Oh, man. I'm getting hungry too that doesn't help anything honestly I'm kind of rethinking everything and I'm wondering if I should just leave this here 
but go back and do what I'm good at, which is fishing. Because even if I catch one of these shrimp, it's not like it's gonna be a huge meal, even if I caught like three or four. So I'll leave this and uh, let's, I'll make sure it's set real well. And then I will stow this right there and uh, come back in a few hours. Maybe there'll be some shrimp in it. But get on to some real fishing that I can actually get some sustenance because I'm kind of suffering right now, hunger-wise. Let's get out of here. I'll explore this place later. So I'm back in a town and then I just took the road that said shoreline access. Wow, look at all this wood. Oh look, there's a kite surfer right there. That's cool. I feel like I could find a coconut among all this. Oh yeah, I could find a bunch of coconuts. Oh hallelujah. As long as they aren't all too old. Yeah, there's nothing. Oh, I saw juice come out. That's a good sign. Oh, guys. Look at it. Oh. That is the most beautiful sight I've seen all day. is lifted about 28 hours into the challenge and I finally have a coconut this one peels away from the side really easily look at this this is a big one I hope I hope it's actually hard to tell this is a big one though, man. If this had something in it, that would be amazing. There. All right, the moment of truth. Oh, that didn't work. Let's try that again. The moment of truth. I see white. I see white. Guys, I'm actually not gonna burst that open. You can see there, um, yeah, I think I have another good one. You can see the white in between there. I got a, two good coconuts. I found two and then a whole bunch of duds are out here. A lot of old, um, old ones. You can see one I broke open there. But I will take Two good coconuts. This is actually a cool beach. I've never been here before. Now let's drive back to the jungle and uh, check the shrimp trap. I hope there's a shrimp feast in there for me. All right, back at the pull-off spot. All right, this is gonna tell the tale if I'm gonna eat or not. Any in there? Oh, I think I see. They're in there. They're in there. I got shrimp, folks. Oh, I got, well, I got two, I guess. That's good. Well, it's two more than I had before. I'd kind of envisioned like half a dozen, but wait till you guys see these. Guys, this is the first time I've ever caught these, ever. I've known they've existed for a long time. I've just never gone for them. Didn't kind of know how. Look at these. Oh. There we go. Guys, look at this. Are you kidding me? Look at this huge shrimp. This guy has some long, I'm almost scared of them. I don't, do, I, I think these guys can uh, pinch you, I think. I mean, 
They can like reach, he can reach around behind him, which is scary, I think. I think he can. Um, no, not quite. Ladies and gentlemen, look at those pinchers. Those are creepy looking, man. <laughs> Let's put him in there. Wow, that is just cool. And the second one, yes. Big ol' freshwater shrimp. And I've heard these are delicious. You know what? Let's throw this back out. Still got bait in it. And I'm gonna come back in the morning and check it. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? I'm gonna get the second one out. And I'm gonna leave two of these in here overnight and then check them sometime tomorrow. Just gonna throw it kind of just right in the middle. There we go. There were more around this when I pulled it up. In fact, I didn't think I got any because all of a sudden I saw some scatter. Um, but uh, there were two in it, so there are more, plenty more in this pool to be had. I have to imagine the pool this large. There are tons of them. Two traps on both ends there. Sweet. Let's take my catch back and cook it up before that sun goes down. All right, I gotta make this fast, but there's something in the road. Like it fell out of somebody's truck or something. That, yeah, passion fruit. I would, um... Hold up. There's a... There's a passion fruit tree up there. Oh, I thought it fell back to somebody. Well, it might be good then. Actually, that's a bad spot on it. Hold on a second. There's a passion fruit tree. Luckily, I can see a long way down that road, so I'm gonna try to, like... Anything? Here's a big rock. Come on. Oh, hey, oh, I got, well, a tiny one. Oh, an under, well, I'll see. I'll keep that one. Anything? There, got it, got it. See, I stopped trying to point the camera and just focused on throwing. Bam, got a fruit. I gotta get out of the middle of the road here. Get all the rocks out of the street. They aren't very big ones, there are tons of rocks, actually. You know, I have one more. Actually, a car's coming, I can hear the honking. Well, that was fun, I got one. I'm, I might come back to this spot. The car sometimes part, or a honk uh, to let people know they're coming um, down the hill, especially at the, like, the needle, uh, what do they call it? The, the, the turns, the tight turns. <laughs> Look at this evening, guys. All right, I have a crazy idea. I was gonna go back to camp. I ain't going back to camp, watch this. I mean, I will go back to camp eventually, but I'm gonna cook up right here. It is so, wow. Look at this. Are you kidding me? It just keeps getting better. Like the, the sun setting adds a whole new element to it. And see, I always wonder like, are there just tons of fish along here? Because it's so hard to access. I, mean, I wonder, but I'm gonna cook up Right, um, where am I gonna cook up, I guess? I think right just in the back, I guess. What an evening. Shrimp for the first time. Fruit. Boy, this day turned out pretty cool. Pretty cool. I was hungry for a few hours during it and maybe a little grumpy, but um, it turned out overall pretty darn fun. All right, I'm gonna actually cook these shrimp the same way I did the uh, limpets this morning. Oh, oh, there's a disaster. Right. Get it together, bro. Shoot. There we go. We're not exactly on a flat surface. What the? Stop! Ow! This is so... I can't get this cord, this janky to stay in its spot. There we go. Okay. Right. Stay. Pour this shrimp and crab oil in. Cooking the shrimp in shrimp and crab oil seems appropriate. And then the octopus tastes so good in this stuff too. 
It was uh, Glenn, a subscriber, who turned me on to this. He first sent this uh, to me in a care package. I don't think this is his bag. It's just a tight. But, oh, it's been so good. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start with the smaller one. I don't... Oh, they're feisty. These shrimp are crazy because they're um, they're super quick and they're kind of like smarter than a crawdad too. They'll, they're real hesitant about going in a trap and all that. Kind of, dude, bro, 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 settle down. Like I'm gonna pin him down. With my foot. Like he's trying to pinch my sandal. What I'm actually gonna do so they don't cause so much ruckus in the pan is kill him real quick. There we go. Just the heads off, and that way when I set them in the hot water, they don't cause so much disturbance there all right i'm just gonna let me shake them off. a little bit of dust on in there all right shrimp going in interesting look at that claw man look that's that's evil looking i wonder if it has much force I'm not about to test it let's put it that way oh look it's still clean to the grass that's a little indicator of how much force it has, even after he's dead. Kind of steam for a bit, and then I'm gonna come over here. I've got the octopus tentacles out that I'm gonna eat uh, for this evening meal, but I'm gonna <laughs> tenderize them <laughs> a little bit because they were pretty darn hard the other night. Then I'll switch them around and. There we go, about 25 times or so. And you know what? Um, yeah, I'll just slip it in there. There's no problem. The octopus just takes a couple of minutes. There we go. Sweet. And then let's cut open our fruit here. Huh. I don't have much experience with these. Might as well just take a bite. Oh, it's way underripe. It's like hard as a rock. Shoot. At least I have coconut, you know. I'm gonna devour this coconut tonight, and I'll probably save the other one for tomorrow, maybe. I might eat some of it. I get filled up on coconut pretty fast, to be honest. Even when I'm really hungry, like, there's something like it fills your stomach. I think it's because it's so fibrous, it's like, you kind of get sick of eating it quickly. I mean, it's delicious, but you just get sick of eating it quickly. What an amazing, amazing view. That'd be cool to live in one of these houses down here. I think. You'd be pretty far from town, though. That would be very inconvenient. How are things looking? Mmm. Bright red shrimp. I think these are done. Oh. I think I can... You know what? Actually, I'll, I'm just set this off the side. I'll save that. Maybe it'll ripen up or I'll think of something to do with it. I don't know. A couple of bright red shrimp there. Mm -mm. And now that I put it all on the plate, to be honest, it doesn't look like much. You know, this is a really cool meal. It's just not going to, it's just not a lot. So one thing I noticed right off the bat is that the shell is a lot harder and thicker than a saltwater shrimp. It's kind of crawdad-like, the shell is. A little bit difficult to peel. Not too bad, though. It's very full of meat. That's really good. It's, um, definitely, like, tastes like a shrimp. Is it as good as salt water? It's, I'd have to try them side by side. It is really, really delicious. It's like, you see the tail. That's a nice sized tail there. One of the things that's gonna swing the advantage toward the freshwater shrimp is how hungry I am at this moment. So, factor that in. But you guys can see, like, that's a good, good bite right there. That is a... Mmm. Mmm. All right, octopus tentacle. Did beating it against the rock do anything? Hard to tell. Um, to be honest, I don't see, like, chew any differently, it seems like. It's still really good in that shrimp and crab boil. Octopus and shrimp and crab boil, wonderful combination. Well, my friends, by the time I get back to camp, it's going to be completely dark out here. So, I guess 
I will just see you guys in the morning. I'm actually gonna drive past my camping spot, go into town, and try to find a chicken trap. I'm gonna scour some of the stores and um, see if I can come up with one. I'll see you guys in the morning. Oh, there's a surfer. Where did he come from? A surfer out there. It is a windy morning to be surfing. Good morning, everybody. Halfway, over halfway through this deal. I uh, have been getting through it pretty well. What do you want? Chicken friends have come to. He's clucking at me. What's up? I'm going to catch one of you. So last night, I um, went into town. I had to fill up with gas. By the way, hot tip, make sure your gas tank is full. Not, not that I got stuck. Make sure your gas tank is full uh, on the uh, wild side of the island because there are uh, like no gas stations back here. What is your problem? He's like, yeah, you enjoy those McDonald's fries? Me too. Anyway, I went into town and I got gas. And then I was talking to my dad about actually trapping these chickens. And um, he said, don't worry about a chicken trap. And he gave me an idea uh, with the products that I already, or some of the things that I already have uh, with me, fishing stuff. He used to actually trap when he was younger. He used to trap beavers and otter and all that stuff. And then he gave me a tip that I was like, yeah, I don't have to spend money on a chicken trap. So I'm gonna do that a little bit later, but first I wanna get, I think I'm gonna, what am I gonna do first? <laughs> Quiet, I'm trying to work here. I think I'm gonna catch, just try to catch like a fish for breakfast I'm using a spoon again. Also refilled my water tank. Woo, it's so windy out here. I do not like it. Got one. No, it's a snag, dang it. Ah, not a good way to start the day. So I did a little test fishing this morning and uh, it's just too windy out there. It's like 30 mile an hour winds. I mean, right at this spot, I'm actually pretty good. But as soon as you get down to the beach, it's just whipping. So I think I'm gonna put, uh, keep my activities to like the streams at first and then maybe focus on the chicken trapping, but kind of stay inland until this wind dies down. By the way, having two big coconuts has been fantastic i kind of have like little coconut popcorn right there and whenever i get really really hungry even though i'm getting kind of sick of it at this point when i get super hungry at least i have something to munch on so that's been wonderful another thing that's been wonderful too is the octopus i actually eat a little octopus right before bed every night so that i am uh not going to bed starving and then my um my sleep isn't very good I still can't believe there's been like, nobody's camping at this campground. That's been crazy. All right, that's what, there's shrimp. I hope I'm gonna fill up this little bucket. Both traps are still there. The water's even clearer than yesterday. I see even more shrimp outside the trap. <gasps> oh yeah, guys, oh yeah, oh we got. How many? How many? One, two, three big ones. Three big shrimp. Oh, excellent. Let's see how much the other one has. I, I, I just see shrimp swimming all over here too. This might be a hunting day in the stream. Oops, accidentally collapsed it. Oh, I have one. I have four in this one. So seven shrimp to eat. <sighs> this one has no claws, which is interesting. But there we go, and they taste even better than crawfish. Oh, <laughs> look at that beast. Look at how long his, wonder how hard those hurt. I don't know if I wanna try it, how much power they have. They'll probably eventually pinch me on accident. These have like three times as much meat. Uh, ouch! Okay, he pinched me there. Uh, that's a pretty good little pinch. It had more scared me than anything. Um, it, it's not... It, I kind of... It, it didn't... I don't think that can make you bleed. Uh, but it more just the... It, he reached over so fast, kind of scared me. 
there are a lot more shrimp to be had in here folks i think i'm gonna walk along here i actually brought a spear in fact let me just show you guys so i've got my main spear switch it out for this three prong it's way too thick this is would definitely injure the shrimp but i'm not gonna actually like get any i think this one will actually stick them now that should get some but i gotta eat first because i am so hungry i'm not gonna even i'm gonna be i, I feel lazy because i'm weak <laughs> and so i need to get some food in me i gotta clean this is all dirty from the last time like big chunks of food and stuff on it this is a nice flat surface. Oh, heck fire. I might just sit right here and cook. Yeah. I'm going to use up the last of the shrimp and crab boil. This has been amazing. I'm going to add some of my first cast to it, too, just to amp it up. I've got quite a few shrimps, so I need a little bit more flavor. Maybe some red lobster seafood seasoning. Oh, they're fighting the spatula and stuff. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <gasps> Dang it! You gotta wait, wait. Ah, oh, he's gone. Dang it. You know what's interesting about these streams? Is that, um, I don't see any fish in them. Like, even like, m minnows, or schools of minnows. I may have seen one little, one or two little ones darting around, but... Look at these bright red morsels here. <laughs> these would be so good. I am, uh, I'm disappointed that I lost that other one. That was a big one. I need, I need every bit of meat that I can get. Oh, but how about that? Mmm. There have to be fruit trees through here. I mean, I, there could be papaya, passion fruit, guava, limes, lemons. I saved the two big ones for last. This tastes so good. This is this is like eating lobster or something. Kind of thick shelled. There. Oh man, this is like a lobster dinner right here, folks. Mm. Dip it in the sauce. I'm even trying to get the little bits of meat out of the head here. There actually are little bits of meat right around the upper part of the head. I just discovered that. There's the brain. I don't know if I need to eat the brain. Oh yeah, yeah, there's there's a little bit. A little bit of head meat. Right there. You know what? Let's check a claw. I'm curious, is there anything in here? Oh, there's a little bit. There's a little bit there. Look at that little nugget. I would've missed that too. I mean, it's not much at all, but every little bit counts here. I've completely disassemble these guys all right it's time to move on upstream and I'm just gonna look for them in the shallows they're smart and they're quick lightning quick and very cautious he's not moving I wonder if I missed him or they just don't move when you come on Asa are they really that fast? Did he just like give me the slip like <laughs> There's no way he's that fast. No way. Either I'm a terrible, terrible shot, which is honestly a possibility, or these things are like ninjas. These are like absolute ninjas. Are they all hiding today or something? 
the conditions have changed. Like, I wonder if this clear water is actually making them like hide more. Cause they just, I go, I keep going from pool to pool and I'm just not seeing any. Whereas yesterday, man, they were, they were all just, they were on top of rocks and they were just out scooting around and I, I don't, I'm not really seeing anything. I don't mind telling you guys, I'm beat. I feel tired and sore right now. I have less than 24 hours to go. I think I'm gonna be done with the shrimp thing. The conditions have changed and they're like all under rocks or something now and I need them above the rocks to spear them. I'm gonna lay on this rock, sun myself like a big lizard. sign of my chickens but uh, they might be because a lot of times they uh, have been coming around after I park they like see me set up they may be in the bushes or something up there and uh, we're down here and then they come over so I don't see the chickens anywhere close by so I'm gonna kind of go hunt for them I've got my machete my fishing rod and the uh, McDonald's fries in my pocket I just have a few fries left so I'm gonna have to make this really count. Here, chick, 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 chick. I'm just gonna kinda walk up this dried stream bed. I see signs of them, like they've been just scratching through here like crazy. Oh, a fruit. What do we got? What is this? A guava. What? It's a guava. Right? Or no. All right, this sounds so funny, but I get guava and passion fruit mixed up all the time. No, it's it's, it's passion. It's passion fruit. Sorry. <laughs> That's really dumb. But it's um it smells divine, actually. Passion fruit going in. Wow. That's really good. It's sour, but it's good. I found a good passion fruit. I, I can't believe it. Yes. Ah, oh, I don't know if it's really that good or it's just that I'm so hungry. That is so fun. They are all over around here. Guess I, I can basically have as much uh, passion fruit as I want. Ooh, sets your teeth on edge though. Reminds me of like eating warheads, you know, like the, those um, little candies good you know I'm gonna get like five of them and uh, and then I can always just walk back over here if I need any but five for now should be great all right so I ate a couple passion fruit and then stored a bunch of them in a spot I'll come back and I just got to find my chickens they're normally like everywhere and of course when you actually look for them, can't find any what is this? I don't know what that is. Looks like some sort of pea pod. Might be nothing. Might be just like a seed pod for a tree or something. I don't know. Might be good. All right, guys. That was a, a productive little walk there, even though I didn't find my chickens. guys I don't really know what to do here I'm hungry I'm tired I'm chickenless oh look there they are they're behind that truck there they are all right <clears throat> they must have just come down the hill here we go I was about to say where can you find a chicken? Like, there are like a million chickens on, there literally might be one million chickens on this island. And, but when I want one, <laughs> can't find it. So, the ancient suggestion. 
suggested that I use a fishing rod to catch the chicken and then on the business end rig up something. So all I do is take a three-way swivel, loop it through there, through there, and tie it off on this one. Clip off the excess. And then check it out. I have an instant, like uh, an instant loop where this is laying on the ground and the little chicken foot comes along and bam, got him instantly because they're re really quick. And I can lay the loop out very easily too. Look at all the scratching they've done through here. Just tons and tons of scratching. All right, let's set the trap. <sighs> That was, uh, that was actually pretty intense. First time ever catching a chicken. Huge shout out to my dad for that idea with the swivel so it snapped shut really fast. They couldn't pull their foot out. My first ever wild chicken in Hawaii, folks. I am so excited to try to eat this. I've never cleaned a chicken before, which is gonna be a bit of a challenge, but I did watch Zach Fowler's YouTube video on it. It didn't seem too hard. So basically plucking it is the longest part of the process, but Wow, first, I, I can't believe I'm gonna be eating fresh chicken during this challenge. This is, uh, this is one of the best challenges I've ever done so far. I'm gonna come over here to this little like grassy spot. Um, with, the, with the way the wind's blowing, it, I want it to blow the feathers that way and not like throughout the whole camp. <sighs> All right, adding new skills to my life here. I guess I'll just start anyway. Oh, those pulled out really easily. Oh, I thought I was really gonna have to like. Oh, no wonder people eat so many chickens. This is eat really easy. The feathers, it's a good man. It's weird because the bird is really warm still. I'm used to like <laughs> touching frozen chicken, I guess. It just feels so weird to me. Well, they're just kind of harder to pull out the pin feathers. Okay, so the next step, apparently it's pretty easy to clean these suckers. So Zach said in his cleaning chicken video, you can make a cut and then you can actually remove all the guts and stuff and if you do it right to where you don't even need to like wash it if you do it right. So I'm going to make a shallow cut. All right, I didn't do that quite right, but first time thing. So, all right, lay it open and just pull out all the guts. Yeah, I didn't, at least there's no like blood so far. There we go. Zach said, yeah, I didn't get any poop in there. Sweet, sweet, sweet. That's excellent. He's, you want to grab the throat and then pull all the intestine out and bam, there's no chicken poo on the um, on the meat. There you go. And then he said to cut, shout out to Zach too for making that video. Cut the uh, end off here, let's put it that way. I'm going to cut these wing tips off too. Just like so. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I've got a cleaned chicken I did break the skin right there a little bit but that is fine um there we go all right now I gotta collect some firewood I'm gonna roast this thing over a fire I think that would be best plenty of driftwood around here plenty
All right, so here's the situation, my friends. I was getting all set up for a nice little fire here, gonna roast the chicken over it, but the wind is just absolutely howling out here. It's very, very frustrating, and it's getting worse. I don't even know what's, I'm, cause I'm kind of in a little cove here. I don't know, if it's, it must be like 40 mile an hour winds out there, it seems like. It is just absolutely, and every once in a while, just micro burst through here. So I'm gonna move my vehicle to try to make like a little kind of shelter and I'm not gonna cook over fire. There's no way I'm gonna be able to cook a chicken. The wind is gonna be able to just blow all my heat away. So I'm gonna have to just cook it in a frying pan. So I have everything all rearranged here, kind of out of the wind. I'm gonna cut up this bird. I had actually had to rinse it off because of all the wind was blowing um, sand into it. So yeah, that was annoying. Funny, I'm used to the big fat birds at the grocery store, and I'm like, I mean, this, this is gonna be good, and it's a good amount of meat, but it's definitely not like the grocery store types. Look at that, there's half a breast right there, and I'm gonna cook that first. Oh man, I'm hungry. had a little trouble with the matches there. That was the last one. Whew. All right, there we go. Oh, and that's not what I wanted, actually. Uh, see, when, I, when I'm tired, like all kinds of weird things happen to you when you start to get tired. All right, so first thing I need to do, it's like your mental faculties just start slipping. So I got butter here. See, I should have gotten butter. I should have got all this stuff prepared before I even lit it up. I don't know what I'm thinking. Hmm. And then this package was sent to me by Heidi Hefs. Thank you so much for the nice letter. And she sent me two seasonings. One, oops, a Montreal, uh, I'm just, see, look, I'm just like, I'm just butterfingers. I'm so hungry and I'm even like, I'm shaking right now. But thank you so much, Heidi, for sending me this kicking chicken seasoning, which I thought was perfect. I, I, I brought it to Hawaii. I didn't think I'd actually be cooking it up on a real chicken. I thought, oh, we'll try it for, you know, something, something else. And uh, I just need to get some food in me. I really like trying new seasonings, so thank you, Heidi. Thank you to everybody who sent me cool stuff. I try to get to it eventually. Just set the chicken in there on that. And this piece through the butter. And I'm gonna add some to the top. That should be amazing. Now that doesn't look too bad now, does it? I am I'm excited. I can't believe I caught my own chicken. Like when that when that hits me, some hit it just bleh, bleh, bleh. see I don't know how to talk. It just comes all over me that I just caught this chicken myself and I'm cooking it up, which is just super cool to me. Oh man, my mouth's watering. Cooked them low and slow. It wasn't really me, it was just the wind blowing away most of my heat that caused them to cook low and slow. Definitely gonna say a prayer for this blessed day. You know what, I'm just not even go for utensils, I'm just gonna, you know, it might have turned out fine that I did not fire roast this thing, so I don't know if it turned out as good. You can go, bud. No, you're fine. What is that? It smells amazing. It smells amazing? You could have, well, it's a wild chicken. Oh, over there. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, um, it's a wild chicken. What? Um, I, yeah, I just caught it like right over there and then I just butchered it and cooked it up. Really? You want to try a bite? Uh, totally can. I have a piece of the breast, so you can just take a fork. All right, okay. Okay, now, this is a wild chicken. It's not a okay. farm chicken. Okay. So it's gonna be a little tough. I just, I wanted to cut it to see. Um, and I can hold your camp. Here, let me hold it so the wind doesn't blow across here. Okay, so wild chicken, you wild just chicken. caught it. Yeah, now that's a chicken breast, so you can try a piece if you want. I, I will try it with you. That's good. It tastes good. I heard that they're a little, a little bit stringy, but and it is a little stringy, but maybe a little. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you for. Do you want any more? You good? No, uh, I'll take another piece. Take another piece. Okay. <laughs> oh, they're about to be jealous. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One guess. 
What do you think it is? What do you think it is? What? Chicken. <laughs> you want a piece? So good. Here, try this. Oh my gosh, it's a whole chicken. chicken. Yes. Oh, that is just caught it. He just caught I it. I know you did not just catch that thing <laughs> on the side of the road. Just right over here. I caught it like, like an hour ago, right over there. Right 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 right. And I just took over his meal. <laughs> what do you think? On a scale of one to it? ten. I'll try it later. It's delicious, but oh, yeah. that little baby was just out there running around. <laughs> Poor little guy. It's okay. It smells You wanna buy it? It's wild chicken. <laughs> She said y'all could smell it all the way down there. Oh, we could. Yeah, we could. Yeah. We were like, who's cooking? Thank you. That was so good. Uh -oh. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. It's gonna burn. Oh, what's this? That's it. Wait, this is your face. So recording. Hey. So good. So good. It's good. Excellent. Get my car. Thank you. I'll take a picture. Ten out of ten. Okay, okay. Staying like but on the on, yeah. But yeah, but on the island. But on the island. Another reason why you just keep coming out, getting out of the house. So it is tough. I have to say, um, you know, this chicken's been working. It's been going around trying to collect bugs every day. It's been climbing the hill there. Probably running from roosters and all that stuff. So it's a little tough, but the taste is just so phenomenal. <laughs> well, guys, that was a fun way to end the day all the way around. Um, I was just about to comment, I haven't seen Oliver ever since that first day. And right as about to, I was about to turn on the camera to say that, suddenly Oliver shows up. Oh, Oliver's gone now. Oliver! Oh, hey you, hey kitty kitty. Okay. Oh my, look at this. This is why I ain't tent camping. Ugh. That is a big old centipede. I'm gonna kill that guy actually. I don't want him accidentally crawling up on my leg or something. Or hurting my cat. So this rock here, I'm just gonna. There, all right. That's taken care of. Uh, what I'm gonna do is probably leave I'm gonna stop eating uh, some of these bones and stuff here. I'm probably just gonna leave them on. Oliver can can eat them from here on out. I've had a lot, and I still actually have some. So um, yeah, it's been a fantastic, fantastic day. Shrimp and chicken, <laughs> just amazing all the way around. So thank you guys for hanging out. I'm gonna bed down for the night, I guess. I'll see you guys tomorrow. It is howling out there. It howled all night. It's so, so windy. Oh, but I am full of chicken. I ate that whole thing last night, folks. Every shred of it. But there's one more thing I want to do. I expect, I see, I see two chickens back there. A hen and a rooster. They're still hanging around. Folks, that chicken was so delicious. I want another one. A wild chicken sandwich. Oh, that's the end. Woo! Oh, check it out. Look, it's bleeding mayonnaise on the end there. Oh, a crispy one. That this is my favorite one right here. What a great last catch for this challenge. And look, a fry tree. I didn't even know this was growing here. And look, fresh blooms. Oh. They're good. Mm. You gotta pick them at just the right time. Mm -mm. The animals will get them if you don't. Well, guys, there's another three day challenge in the books. 
Thank you guys so much for hanging out. See you in the next one. What is going on, my friends? Welcome to the Hawaii series. I'm here with me, Ancient. Check out his channel in the description below. And today, we are kayak fishing out over the reef. See what we can catch, take back, and cook it up. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Here we go, my friends. Woo! Water looks nice and clear. We've never launched here, guys, before, so this is a little sketchy for us. <laughs> Wilson! Wilson! Yes, sir. All right, my friends. The clouds have come overhead. Makes it a little bit shady, a little nicer out here. We're in about, I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. 30, 40 feet of water, I'm guessing. Right, my friends, I have a little chunk of octopus on a circle hook, which is just a fabulous little all around bait for Hawaii. Drop that over the reef and you're bound to get some action. And it uh, could be big fish, could be reef fish, but it's just a good bait to start off with. If you get fresh octopus, that is the best. Right, I'm on the bottom, reel a couple of reels off the bottom. Wow. What a view, guys. <laughs> this is cool. Fish on. Fish on. Yes, First fish. Oh, a uh, ringtail rash. There you go. Look at those teeth on that get bad boy there. <laughs> Bam. All right, got the skunk out of the boat. Yes, indeed. All right. Got him. There we go. That's one that took it. Oh, he doesn't feel that big. At least he took it, though. Oh, it's a goatfish. Of course. Because goatfish are savages even though their name oh i like hooked him in the whisker <laughs> oh i literally got him in the whisker there we go popped right out that's a beautiful fish that orange and red is amazing uh-huh that's pretty cool all right we'll let him go these make great bait they have to be over eight inches to keep though it's about six yeah length, oh yeah fork length i forget about that hmm I'm gonna try casting, guys, and I'll then let it pendulum back to the boat. Something's biting me. Got him in mid, in the mid water column. Oh, I cast it out there. He's pulling it. Oh, this is a good fish too. Yes, that worked. I made a long cast. Oh, look at some sort of snapper. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Guys, look at this beautiful fish. What is this? I think, uh, I don't know what kind, I think it's a snapper, might be a ver vermilion or something. Look at that fish, guys. What a great catch. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's some sort of snapper. <laughs> guys, that's a cool thing about the ocean. I mean, you just never know what you're gonna catch. Now, I actually think I've caught one of these before when I was little from the shore, night fishing. Um, it was smaller than this, if I remember correctly. Thank you, Pops, for the fish bag. Um, but I think I've caught one of these. And, uh, golly, that is sweet. That is a good-sized fish. Uh-huh, that'll make some great fillets there. Yeah, cast it out. I could feel something biting uh, on getting, the way down. Yeah, I'm getting something bit, too, now. Oh, jeez, that's a good fish. You got a good one, Pops. You got, oh, whoa, whoa! Mm -hmm. Whoa, 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 okay. Gotta put my water down here. All right, all right. Well, we got serious fish here, folks. We got serious fish. Oh my goodness. Did you see that run? That was, oh my goodness. That was ins an insane run. This might be an uku. Remember how a lot of times they'll just take uh -huh. off with it? Then, oh God, he's, he's strong. Yeah. This yeah. fish is strong. Yeah, just play him. Yeah. Oh. Oh, jeez, did you see? I mean, he what? just pulled me down to the whole ride. Good down grief. The water. I want to see what this is. Yeah, I really want to see what this is, too. I'm dying to curiosity. Gosh, I mean, Asa, he is just. Just powerful just kicks. Powerful, just crushing it's like you get him pointed up, and then. Uh huh, he's like, uh uh. It's a Nuku. It's a Nuku. Guys, it's a snapper. Get the calf. <laughs> get the calf. Oh, it's a good one. It's a good one. 
It's a good one. Oh, it's a good one. Okay. I'm going to lose him. I'm lose him here. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a good one. I don't want to grab your line and get, get, oh. Let me just let him tire out a minute. I'm tired. <laughs> Whoa. Look at oh, that. Nice, nice. Look at, oh, before his line cuts your teeth. Get him. Yes. Pops. Oh, wow. That is what I'm talking about. Double, double snappers. At least I think mine's a snapper. Oh, my. Wow. Oh, my. That <laughs> is sweet. That is I thought it might be one the moment it bit. Guys, I didn't have time to get my line down there when my dad I got oh, his. Man. We yeah, must have been. Swallowed it. Oh, look at that. That would have Oh yeah. What a great wow. looking fish. Woo! Oh man. Guys, these fish are so good raw too. Oh, we might be making some poke oh, or something yeah, like we that. Will be. Oh. I could put them on mine. Okay, you gonna put them on yours? Yes, sir. Ah, oh, fish bag is full. Yes, yes, yes. So I thought, yeah, I'm gonna try just a little lighter one. Got him? Yes. All right. Cool. Ooh, oh, pink trigger tailed fish. trigger fish. Well, these are pretty. Uh huh. These are really cool. Look at his little <laughs> side fins. These are just, these are characters right here. <laughs> Let's uh, get him unhooked here. Look at that little pink tail. Oh, that is beautiful. He's got some vicious little teeth on him. Too, they do. Them. They're good. they're savages yeah. that way. Look at those pretty fins. <laughs> what a great little fish. Cool. Oops, nice there catch, Pop. Oh. Here we go. Hey, little fella. There. Oh, there we go. <laughs> this really was the last cast of the day, you know. I'll give this to you so I can focus on paddling. Well, my friends. Uh, assuming we don't get turned by a wave on our way in, it was a really good time out here. And uh, we're going to have to go back to the place and figure out how we're going to cook these up. All right, out here on the Lanai, it is a beautiful, beautiful evening. Got all my kayak stuff drying out here. I'm on the back side of the building. I'm not on the ocean uh, front side. And uh, I actually like that because I can do things like clean my fish and not disturb anybody, have a little bit of street noise, but uh, I don't disturb anybody. I don't want to clean inside the condo and I don't want to clean down on the lawn where all the grills and stuff are because all the tourists, you know, trying to eat their steak dinners and then some dude tromps down there and is like, I'm going to take over one of these picnic tables and clean my fish on it. A little noisier on this side, but I, I like it because then I can be out of the public eye and do all my fishing stuff out here. So, all right. Oh, good looking, good, good looking snapper. Probably about a three, three and a half pounder. Oh, that might be four. You know, as I sit here and speculate, it might turn into about five or six pounds. And you know, by the time I uh, start talking about it with friends, it'll be about seven or eight pounds. So since I'm gonna make sushi out of this thing, and true sushi for the first time, I'm gonna first cut like the choicest pieces off. I don't wanna cut in, uh, in the gut sack. Get those juices running on the meat that I'm gonna use for sushi. So I'm gonna kinda of start right in the middle here. All right, look at that, there we go. Now we're, we're cooking. See, no, no spillage or anything at the moment. Hawaiians eat a lot of different uh, fish raw from the reef. My friend Mike was telling me who lives here, but this is one of the most sought-after fish raw. Yeah, take that stuff off. You know, I was sitting here thinking like we should probably should have bled it out, but I remember reason the reason why we didn't is we don't want any sharks like come snooping around while we're out there on the kayak. We got fish. Yeah, <laughs> release a bunch of fish blood in the water. Ah, there we go. Hawaii tiger sharks are uh, pretty famous. Look at those lovely little fillets there. Now, I um, texted my friend Mike, and he said this is a black-tailed snapper. So thank you to Mike for helping me out. Uh, if you guys want to check out his channel, linked in the description. Uh, he lives on Hawaii. He has some cool Hawaii videos, some catching cooks and stuff. And I'm going to do the same thing with this guy, only since it's smaller. Oh, he did tell me that for a black-tailed snapper, this is a really nice size one. 
Yes, yes, yes. Look at that. Just, just the most excellent parts. And I'll come back later and get the rest off. All right, my friends. Beautiful morning out here. Nothing like sushi for breakfast. So I have everything set out here. It's a beautiful day, by the way. Lovely calm morning. I really like this big table too. This like serious stone table and chairs here. Love it. And I've got everything set out here. So first, got the fish on a little ice. Have a knife, a cutting board for the fish, and then a cutting board for actually making the sushi. This is roasted seaweed right here. Um, I'm not sure, this like side is rough. I'm not sure if to use smooth side or rough side. I got quite a few sheets in here. It's all pre-made, pre-roasted. It had sushi on the outside there, so I figured this was the right stuff. And then we got rice seasoning. I'm gonna put some dragon's dust on it for some heat. And we got soy sauce, wasabi. Hey Pops, how are you doing? Uh, it looks You're... like I've arrived just in time. Yes, just in time, about to start preparing it. We've got sticky rice and some cucumber. I used the, the saran wrap there so that the fresh water would not get on the fish. This is my first time making true sushi, so I might make a mistake here. Um, I, I thought I was making sushi before. I have some old videos. I, I kind of thought in the past that every time you just like made any one of those raw dishes, it was sushi, but I actually made sashimi, and I was soundly chastised by those of the Asian persuasion when I posted that video and started calling it sushi. So this is the first time making true sushi that's rolled up in the rice and seaweed. There we go. Like a lot of little strips like that of the, right here are the other one. I don't know if we're gonna be able to taste much difference between the snapper. We'll see though. All right, the first step is to lay out, oh, that stuff sticks to your hands when your hands are wet. Um, so you got this roasted seaweed and you're supposed to take sticky rice and cover the whole thing. How did I learn to do this? Just YouTube. <laughs> there are so many great videos on there about everything. Cooking, and you wanna learn to, I mean, I've learned how to smoke ribs and pork butt and everything, all from YouTube. Now I'm starting my journey of learning Asian cooking. Rice seasoning, um, my friend Mike turned me onto this stuff and it tastes amazing. Just this little, wasabi flavored whatever that word is there i'm not even going to attempt it not sure if this is a uh, japanese or hawaiian to be honest because there's there's such a huge japanese influence in hawaii i'm not sure look at that the, the fish is perfectly cut for laying in there let's see i think we'll just go one uh, one for now and i'll see how it's going to turn out i'm going to put a, a couple pieces of cucumber in there i have here papa's pepper dragon dust. I thought dragon dust would be appropriate for sushi. My friend Aaron showed me this stuff and it's very very powerful so I'm just gonna put, ooh maybe that was actually a little too much. It has ghost pepper and Carolina Reaper and all that in it like a ton of peppers in there. Give it some spice and now the roll. The roll can be difficult but a guy on the video said make the first one about there and tuck it in roll it nice and tight bam look at that my <laughs> the first sushi roll on my channel there folks now the cutting wonder if you could just eat this like a burrito you probably could but for this for, for this first one i'm gonna do it all official like here and cut it look at that that is cool look at that my friends now uh, upon first glance, I actually think I should probably put a little bit more fish in it next time, but that is that is acceptable. That That's borderline. For me, I like lots of fish in my sushi roll. Yes. Look at this, Pops. I just added a new skill. Look at you. This wow. is... Oh, the end pieces are always a little rough. In my opinion, I would add a little bit more fish, but mm -hmm. I mean, that, that is sweet. This rice, by the way, is just that instant rice. Just buy it and put it in the microwave. Here we go, the black tail snapper. 
Yeah, this one, this one we're gonna taste more of the fish. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, this is gonna be a thick. Roll it nice and, <laughs> I cannot believe it. You could just like eat this like a burrito. You know, I'm gonna put a piece of cucumber to separate the two types. We'll have the black tail snapper here. Look at that, my friends. Wow. Put this little plastic cup, soy sauce in it, and then just a little wasabi, just a drop. Don't want to get too crazy with the wasabi there. Wow. So on this side is the black tail snapper, and on that side's the uku. Wow. Sushi for breakfast. I, I've never had sushi for breakfast. This is a first. Me neither. This is a first. How cool. You want to pray for us? Yeah. yeah. Lord God in heaven, thank you so much for the creation we get to enjoy, the food we get to eat now, and for Ace's hands that put it together. I just ask you to bless it to our bodies, and thank you for this time together. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Should we try the uku first? Because let's we do don't that. know about the black yeah, tail yeah, snapper. Let's do that. We'll see which one is better. Cheers. Bon appetit. I can't believe you can make these. I, guys, you talk about impressing a girl on a date. Be like, I'll make you sushi. Most women love sushi. Like, you scroll through any online dating profiles. Most of the girls, you know, they'll have those funny questions like, um, the quickest way to my heart is, and the girls will just put in sushi. <laughs> or a perfect date. And they'll just say sushi. So, just an idea. All right, now for the black tailed snapper there. Wow. Kind of double meat on these here. You know, that's the cool thing. When I was in the cafeteria business, you had to be careful of food costs because you didn't want to have too much money involved in the food you were serving. When you catch your own and make your own, mm -hmm. you, can, you don't have to worry about that. Just cheers again. Cheers. You know, just load them up with meat if you Heck want. Heck yeah. To be honest, I can't tell that big of a difference. Yeah, I can't either. The fish is so mild. You know, it's really mm -hmm. a mild, tasty fish. Man. You know what? Between the spicy dragon's dust, which is a wonderful kick, the wasabi, and all the stuff we got going on, I can't tell much of a difference mm -hmm. at all. No. They're both phenomenal. Like, both these rolls, I'm super pleased how they turned out. Like. Oh, yeah. You, should, you can afford to be mad at yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Well, guys, now, um, it's a beautiful, calm day out here. I think we're going to go down to the reef. And let's see what comes along and eats the fish head. All right. Got enough equipment here to chug a horse. <laughs> Always. It <laughs> stayed nice and calm out there. Let's see how the visibility is. So you can see right away the visibility is pretty good, especially when we got away from shore a little bit. And uh, we found this hat drifting around. You never know what you're going to find drifting around out there. Money, hats, jewelry. It said Allegiance of Resilience, celebrating 60 years on it. So if anybody from the Allegiance of Resilience has lost a hat, we found it. My dad found this octopus as well, a little one. You never know how big they're going to be till they uh, till they come out of their lairs. <laughs> He's squirting ink at my dad. Um, not a keeper. They have to be over one pound in Hawaii. But a feisty little fellow. So we let him go. It's just amazing the amount of ink that comes out of those guys. And then I see this octopus. My dad does. I saw him from the surface. And my dad's looking under this ledge. And I'm like, there's a huge, huge octopus right there. I could see it sticking out on the side of the rock. And then he changed color and you could really see him. Look how big that dude is. This was a good, good octopus for this for this species. They call him Day Octopus. Nice size one. We are excited about getting this one out. And me ancient. He's pretty good at this. Look at that one. The crazy thing about bigger octopus is when you grab them, they immediately go to attack you. So he goes to latch onto my dad, and, and they get really um, intense. Like, they, they, they wrap around you really hard and, and, like, squeeze you right before they're out to bite you with a beak. Um, and my dad could feel him starting to do that. So that's kind of interesting about the bigger ones. The little ones kind of have a little bit more of a fleeing attitude. And the bigger one's like, oh, you grab me? All right. I'm going to try to take a chunk out of you. And again, just the amount of ink that these things give off. And then as I was swimming along with him, look, he snakes out a tentacle 
and starts feeling around. The bag does lock, but I'll bet if you gave him enough time in there, he would eventually figure out the little lock on it and uh, and unlatch. It's not really a lock, it's just a latch. Um, but I'll bet that that thing would figure out how that worked if you gave him an hour or two and uh, probably flip it over and get out found this a random sticker on the bottom you just never know what you're gonna find every time you go out we go to the same reef sometimes over and over again and every time it's different because animals move around uh, different you can see right there big puffer fish um, different items on the bottom that, that drift around during the night you got turtles of course are very mobile they love eating this little tiny something that's growing on the rocks they're just some sort of little seaweed and uh, I kept, I was supposed to be putting the fish head on the bottom. I kept getting distracted by all these cool things. Mama turtle with a little baby one cruising around. You don't see that very often where they're kind of cruising together. And then I spy under this ledge a couple of lobster. But these are different lobster. These aren't the traditional spiny lobster that we see. These are kind of, I would say they're, they're kind of rare. Yeah, that, that little thing right there is a lobster. There were two of them. And I grabbed one. These are called slipper lobster. They're just the color of the rocks. They blend in super well, hard to see. In fact, if it weren't for the two little black eyes on the top, they'd be pretty much impossible. They just look like rocks. I wasn't sure how fast this would be. That one slipped out of my hand accidentally, and he didn't really make a run for it. They weren't really fast like the spiny lobster. Kind of easy to catch them, actually. You can keep and eat them, uh, but they have to be a certain size. And I couldn't remember what the size was. So I thought, I'm going to take this thing back and let's get a measurement on it. And we might be eating a little slipper lobster for the first time. All right, my friends, um, back on land here. So I was looking at the regulations for the slipper lobster because it's been so long since I've caught one, like five years or something like that. And uh, we have to measure the tail width has to be two and three quarter inches wide. He and the octopus. I think the octopus actually eat those, so... Um, so yeah. at the tail, it has to be... Okay. It, from the end of that to where my finger is, to there. Now, he's about a uh, half inch, quarter inch shot. Oh, okay. Shoot. So but look at this crazy little bug here. That is so cool. That is... Uh -huh. pull the tail out for you. Yeah, just like a lop, just little slipper lobster, they're called. No pinchers. Well, we'll, we'll uh, set him back out on the reef. Definitely. That's cool, That's though. Very cool. Uh -huh. So I wasn't too disappointed that it wasn't a keeper. Uh, since I rarely see these, it was cool just to catch one, actually. And uh, maybe one day I'll do a catch and cook of one of these. But uh, for now, I was happy just to observe it. They're so unique. Like, what a cool, cool little creature of creation there super happy with that find so i finally got around to the fish head part and uh, in this little kind of valley of coral i thought it'd be a good spot to sit it and if you hear all those whales in the background i think the reason why it sounds so loud in this area is kind of because it kind of echoes uh between the rocks i'm thinking but the little wrasse found the fish head right away and started tearing it up and then this hawkfish found it that's a kind of uh the camo one there and these are like the two most aggressive fish species on the reef, I think, the wrasse and the hawkfish. At least I catch these the most whenever I'm using octopus. Um, and then the fish head actually came loose from the sinker and the wires there, started kind of drifting around. But it stayed in the spot and this mora eel smelled it out. And this was insane. So I expected the eel to grab it and I thought it would just kind of tear it to pieces and, and eat it in bites but he grabs it in one big bite. And you can see it's a huge fish head for an eel that size. And he starts trying to swallow it. And at first I was like, uh, what's he think he's gonna do? Does he really think he's gonna like swallow that whole fish head? Uh, yeah, right. Like maybe if he unhinged his jaw, but the eel keeps working on it. And in fact, he worked on it so long, I'm gonna have to skip through some of this because it was like over five minutes that the eel kept balling up like this. He kept pushing the fish head against the rocks to try to get it down his throat. And I was like, well, what is this? This thing's gonna kill itself if it keeps going at this. And then it occurred to me about halfway through, wait, are these things like pythons or anacondas that can like, you know, eat a baby deer or something like that? Eat things that are twice their size. And all of a sudden, Bam! 
the fish head is gone. It swallowed it. Gives a little kind of shudder. And just swims off like it was nothing. And here I was thinking that the eel might die if it actually swallows it. It was nuts. It's so cool down there. You never know what you're going to see. That's why you just got to keep getting out there and uh, trying new things. What is going on, my friends? Welcome back to the Hawaii series. Out here with the ancient, his channel in the description. And we are here with Mike from Awesome Blue YouTube channel. It's Awesome Blue, right? Yeah. Link to his channel in the description. And we are on the rental boat today. We're gonna do some fishing. We got a couple of trolling rods. We got our bottom fishing rods. We got a full day ahead of us. We got whale watching. Just the works. It's gonna be a great day. As we were gonna try jigging for some, uh, uh, for some bait fish, but uh, we're gonna actually, since there's so much service activity, we're gonna put on, look at this, I've got these in Florida actually, these little squid. I'm gonna put one of these on the line. Look at that little morsel. Uh, we caught a tuna last time we were out here, which was pretty sweet, so we're gonna try, uh, try a little squid for some tuna. And then I've got this uh, double rig on. We caught a tuna on this last time. Throw that out. We're gonna let this out behind the boat. So as excited as I was about trolling, we put in the work, put in the hours, and even went all the way around uh, the island there. Saw a couple whales jump, which was super cool, but we just could not get a bite. Oh guys, we had to stop. There's a whale right there, you guys see him? That's cool. There we go, there's the whales. That's one of the cool things about coming out here fishing, guys, is getting close to these whales. Um, but they do only, they're only here in the winter months, so. Oh, look at that. That's cool. <laughs> that was so cool. That over there is called the Grand Wailea. I think it's one of the grandest and biggest resorts on the island, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody told me, I don't know if it's true, but the guy who bought it, um, bought it for one billion dollars. So, it's kind of interesting. I don't see them. They dove away, guys, so we are free to take off again. Have to stay a hundred yards away from whales. Or you can't have your motors running anyway. I'm really surprised we haven't gotten a bite with three lines out, to be honest. Live bait, traditional trolling baits, and then this tuna bait, like... That's crazy. Well, guys, we tried on the trolling thing. Nothing. I really want to catch a tuna. But we will uh, have to do that for another day. Save that for now. We're going to bottom fish. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with a uh, little circle hook here, a little piece of octopus, a four ounce sinker. Throw this down about 70 feet of water. All right, my friends, we got three different baits out. Mike is using a jig. My dad is using a sabiki, and I'm using an octopus. So we're bound to get something here. Nobody brought a banana on board with him, did they? <laughs> Seriously though, is there any banana on board? <laughs> no. no. Right oh, whale's us. coming right toward us, guys. <laughs> oh yeah, look at, they're on the move. Let me get that big camera out. Oh, that's, on. fish on. Yes, sir. Oh, I think it's what we want, guys. Oh my goodness, there really? it is. There's one of the opa or no, that's a is that a big eyed scat or is that a, a goggle eye? That's that's just as good. That's just as good as oh trolling. Oh wow. Now there is oh. one small tr problem. We don't have a live well. Do you, <laughs> do you troll them dead or you'll stay alive for a few minutes. For a few minutes. <laughs> Fish on? Yep. Again. Oh, another one. Same thing. Uh-huh. Oh, lovely little bait fish. You know, if any, we use them for cut bait, even if we don't oh, use him that's alive. That's a great idea. Yeah. Like, yeah. In fact, if you want to set them on the cutting board, I might put a, a piece of cut bait on right there. Yeah, let's do it. Sweet. Cool. All right, my friends. Putting a piece of that old 
cut bait on. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, and, and they, they can never tell you exactly. Oh, got one. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's a strong fish. Look at that. This might be a papilla or something right here. The way it's. Look at that. Look at that action. Yes. Yes. All right. Woo. It's a strong fish. Oh, it's a big trigger fish. A big, look at this dude. Whoa. Good knit. That's a fatty. Look at that. Oh man. So we ate one of these uh, the other day, Mike, and it was it was really good. It was it wasn't anywhere near the size of this big boy. Guys, look at that. On a piece of cut bait. That was on that uh, the bait fish you caught, Pops. Look at that guys. That is sweet. That little trigger on top. Oh, he doesn't want to lay it down right now. He wants to get you with it is what he wants. Yeah. Alright. Here we go, my friends. Love the little fins on the side. Um, I'm gonna throw them on ice. I mean, this I is a big so. one to eat. They're kind of hard to clean because they have leathery skin, but. We, I think we sweet. just cook them and then you we peel the skin back down. Oh, yeah, we try that. that. Yeah. yeah. There are so many beautiful houses along the shore here. Uh, can you imagine living in one of those? <laughs> wow. All right, my friends, so we're gonna move to another spot. Uh, we've, the trigger fish was cool, and we caught some bait, but it ain't working out here. We're actually gonna go to the spot that um, we've kayak fished before, because at least we've caught some there, even though we're in this cool boat. It's a kind of a simple spot to go to. Sometimes you can't overlook the simple spots. You hit rock? Yeah. Ah, that's good. All right, guys, piece of cut bait at our old spot. Hopefully this will turn things around. It's a big, it's a windy day out here. It's become pretty windy, but that can actually be good sometimes. Really? Fish on? Sure. All right, at our new spot, or our old spot. What am I talking, new, just came here. Oh, you got him, there you go, little ras. Or no, little That's a red fish. goatfish. Almost looks fake. If you tried to like draw that in a picture, yeah, you'd be like, yeah. no that fish looks cool. like that. <laughs> Guys, it's been a long day. It's been crazy because um, it's just been, you know, one thing I've noticed too, there hasn't been near as much whale activity as the That's other morning. Nope. The other morning we got stopped, Mike, like eight times. And so I wonder if you can gauge how good the fishing is going to be based on the whale activity. They just, they don't seem to be as active today. Got one? Yes. Yep. Yeah, I'm dropping mine down there in case it's a papillo and they're like following him. Get doubles. Sweet. Sweet, sweet guys. A giant. It's a white one or whatever. That might be a papillo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Oh, look at that, guys. Woo! Nice. That's a keeper, too. Yes. Yes, yes. Oh, nice. All right, look at that colors on this. Isn't that gorgeous? One of the most desirable fish to catch in Hawaii, folks. Nice catch, Pops. Thank you. Just a little on the small side, but easy to keep. Yeah, they only have to be 10 inches to keep. There, there we go. Isn't on. that beautiful? Mm. God, that's beautiful. Mm. Excellent. You just had a piece of octopus on, right? That was it. All right, two fish in the box. Woo. Well, my friends, this is one of those days where we had to work hard. Hard work hard. There were a couple good, like, it was fun to get a couple of good eaters, but it was a hard working day for fishing, that's for sure. But I think it's interesting how the whale activity corresponded with how slow the fishing was. Like, way less whale activity than the first time we were out here. And we also then caught way fewer fish this time than last time. So I wonder if there's like some, you could gauge how good your fishing day is going to be <laughs> based on how many whales uh you see so fun time but we're gonna go back to the dock here now we're going to make some sashimi i wonder if this little kind of storm brewing here had anything to do with a little bit of a slower fishing day too mm. hey pops look at the wave behind us uh, um you, you want to stop or 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 back up you definitely want to back up. Uh, yeah back up back up okay we might we're fine this time but like holy mackerel yeah, yeah. Good 
Um, wait, wait till this one. Wait till this one, and then and then go. Okay. Yeah, we gotta watch that. All right, now, 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 I would say go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would hurry just because he had a wave behind us. There we go. Uh huh. I think we're good now. Guys, that was uh. Oh, wow. <laughs> that would <laughs> that have been a viral video. Sink a rental boat. By the way, guys, if you want to um, check out, you guys can rent this boat yourself. Go to MauiBoating.com and have uh, all, you can have this these fun adventures too. And you can, don't just have to fish. You can whale watch with your friends. You can snorkel. You can do anything you want out of this boat. You are the captain of it, and they give it to you for four, six, or eight hours. Uh, they do all these like like cool like you can have a uh, customization things where they'll give you snorkel gear or fishing gear and so make sure you check out Maui boating link in the description All right guys, we got a sweet little setup here with a picnic table We launched the boat right there So it's very convenient to have these uh, picnic tables right here, and then I'm gonna kind of let um, Mike guide me through this because check out the sweet stuff he brought we got rice there that he kept in a yeti container <laughs> to keep it warm like in a a, a water or, or coffee mug and so he and these sweet like tea leaves and then got some uh, chives there rice seasoning we got a ton of soy sauce there and uh wasabi. we don't wasabi chopsticks and uh, so we're just gonna appreciate mike thank you so much for bringing all this stuff and then he even provided this sweet foldable fillet knife here that uh, folds down like that a bubble blades one i really really like the feel of this little thing so let's get started here all right mike so he's like right along i'm thinking if i just cut from like here back for this sashimi part or I'd what go, do you yeah a little further out right behind the so like, plate there yeah okay so sh should i fillet it just like a regular fillet I totally job I would just play like a regular fish. Okay, yeah. okay. We'll just do regular fillet job. I didn't know if there were like parts of it you could use and then parts you couldn't for sashimi or something like that. I'll tell you what, I am hungry. Mmm. I love the blue colors on this thing. Pops, nice catch. It's the second one in a row. Yeah. You've caught. What's the official name for these, Mike? O Omel? Omilu. So Omilu. I've been saying that. Blue fin trevally or Omilu. Okay, okay. Good close fillet job there. Pull that up. Sure. Thank you. Don't want to cut through the skin. They do have thin skin. There we go. That's not all right. That turned out very well, actually. Oh, sweet. And look at that, guys. The skin. Uh, that was a close, nice close shave there. So, uh, Mike, do I cut out the bloodline? I'm assuming. Yeah, absolutely. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Cut off the little pin bones too. I can feel them. Remove that part, and look, we got nice white meat there. And then I'm just gonna cube it up. Like so. Looking good. I think so, too. Nice white meat fish. Check that out, guys. I'd say that's a pretty good fillet job there. You see the sun going through it. I'm actually proud of that, pretty proud of that. All right, appreciate you, Mike, for, um, for all this like cool little cooking this stuff here. Uh, you guys, this is <laughs> really sorry, this is a little butane torch. Um, so I'm gonna unlock it, and we can steer. Look at that. We, oh, oh, that one. <laughs> we can. Look at that. We, oh, oh, steer. Here, let me get out of here, man. <laughs> uh, hey, oh. Sear the uh, the fish with this. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll get back to that in a second. All right, we're gonna take the fish and sprinkle it over this rice. Just like so, just for presentation. Thank you for the cool tea leaves and stuff too. Man. Feel really official like, uh, like wine. I'm in a restaurant. Right? Yes, yes. I'm gonna start pouring some soy sauce. Yeah, so my here. dad is going to take care of the soy sauce uh, element there. So I sear it first, right, Mike, and then put the soy sauce on. Was that the plan? Yeah, well, you could try like searing maybe half of it. Okay, half of it. Sweet. Is that how it's supposed to look? Like, am I doing it? <laughs> Let me know if I'm like doing something wrong. Oh, that is cool. It turns it white. I mean, it's cooking, right? Yeah. Cool. Oh man, you could have it well done. Or <laughs> look at that. <laughs> I've never cooked like this before. 
I feel like a chef. And like it sort of marbleizes the fat in the fish and totally helps the flavor. Oh, oh sweet. Put one more in there just to make sure we don't so run should out. I sear half of them or you, like should I flip them over now and sear the other half or is it kind of one of those things where you know, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna flip them over I think actually just made that call all right now we'll do this side of them look how they like like it's the quick cooking too it's like putting them in the frying pan and they just bang it's real precise cooking too <laughs> <laughs> I love it thank you for bringing this Mike this is cool <laughs> it's the little things. It's the little things in life. I'm really enjoying myself right now. I'm gonna toast this one pretty good. I'm gonna put a nice little sear on this bad boy. Make him dark. Wow, that is so But they're cool. still like raw in the middle. So you get that real that excellent flavor. Oh, this is gonna be cool. It's about done, man. I'm hungry. All right, there we go. All right, now we, um, uh, We'll do this, right? No, nope, rice seasoning. Shoot a little, little soy, soy sauce first. Ooh, I like splash this it. Yeah. There we go. Splash right on there. And then Mike brought this rice seasoning that he said is the bomb. Where'd you find this stuff, Mike? Uh, is this a Hawaiian thing? Don't know the answer. Oh, yeah, I think it's more of a Jap. Right it's a Japanese like fusion <laughs> <Japanese>. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese, the Hawaiian. <laughs> oh. oh man. It's basically a mix of sesame seeds and nori, which is uh, seaweed. Seaweed and sesame seeds and that is cool. It looks, and then guys, we're gonna add, look at that, look how beautiful that looks. Then watch this, watch this. We add a little garnish right over top. I hope you guys are fast with chopsticks because I can use chopsticks fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put a little wasabi. Mike brought some wasabi as well on the side in case we want a little spice in our life. Nice. Sweet, sweet. Sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, just grab, grab it out. Oh, grab it out. There you Thank go. you. You break my chopsticks. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. All right, should we say a prayer real quick? Jeez. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this food and this day that we got to share together on the water. Thank you for all the creation that we got to enjoy. I ask you to bless this food to our bodies now. Through Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, should we try the cooked? Cooked or raw for? Let's do, let's do cooked. I'm going to make the, the call. Okay. Oh, man. I got good stuff on there. Let me uh -huh. pick up a few onions. I'm going to grab a little wasabi. Little extra soy sauce and cheers. Mm, I forgot to cheers you. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> what do you think? No, that's good. Mm. Wow, guys, uh, you'll see this in the future. <laughs> All right, now we're just the ultra oh, raw. Yeah. There's nothing. Just seasonings. I'm gonna dredge this in wasabi. I'm gonna put a little, put a little, little spice in my life. Drench in soy sauce. So, which do you guys like better, the raw or the seared? What do you? Man, I like them both, but I personally I like the seared a little better. Seared? What about you, Mike? It's a meaty I, taste. I like the seared a little bit more too. Yeah, it's kind of got that meatier taste, but the raw definitely almost melts in your mouth mm -hmm. some more. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now I have to disagree with you guys on this one because I actually like the raw way better. Or not way better. They're both delicious, but I do like the raw better. So. Wow, what a beautiful day. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the Hawaii series. Me Ancient and I are getting ready to go out snorkeling. Check out his channel in the description, by the way. He's gonna look for octopus and lobster and just any cool thing we might wanna gather and eat out there. And then I'm gonna hand line fish. All it is, you just take a spool and put a sinker on there with a little hook and drop some bait down while you're snorkeling. So I'm gonna give that a go. We're just gonna have fun out here and see what happens. We don't snorkel this place very often, so it was fun to kind of explore a newer area. Uh, a lot of boulders around here and a lot of rock up close to shore, and then the regular reef out there. And my dad found this when we got out over the reef. It was the first find of the day. It's an eel head on a hook. This is a popular bait used by locals for ulua. You see a three-way silver there. An eel head. Apparently the big ulua just love them. So, we kept that with us. That was a cool find. Never found anything like that before. And then I found a sinker. I'm not sure if it was from the rig or not, but a nice little sinker there. And then 
saw something strange on the reef and it's a sea cucumber and I'm thinking about maybe eating one of these what do you guys think a little sea cucumber <laughs> catch and cook I don't know I think <laughs> I don't know if you eat the blubber or there's meat on them or what, but that might be an interesting uh, little experiment there. And then I see an octopus on the reef there. Changes color instantly, sees me, sees that I see him. And uh, me ancient comes in to get him out of there. Little poke of the spear. You don't even have to pierce the skin. You just They don't like being poked with metal and uh, came out. Look at all of the ink from this guy. Good grief. It's almost like the smaller they are, the more ink that comes out or something. It's just relentless clouds of ink, even above the water. See him squirting it around everywhere. Cool little creature, so we decided to keep him. Put him in the dive bag. A lot of you guys have been asking about the dive bag and uh, if you literally just search dive bag they will come up. They're available. They're like 20 bucks or whatever on any uh, kind of dive website. I use it for fresh water and salt water. It's great for crawdads and everything else. And I pulled out my little fishing line here and nothing like a little hand line fishing while you're snorkeling. I've actually done this ever since I was little. Um, had a Ziploc bag of a few octopus chunks that I pre-cut and uh, put a little piece on a hook. And in theory, you can lower it down there and you kind of choose what fish you want to catch. Uh, but the reality is you, you really don't have any choice in what fish you, you're gonna catch because some fish on the reef are so much more aggressive than others. So I hook up right here and pull it in. Look, it's a wrasse and there's another wrasse following it. That's called a Christmas uh, wrasse, believe it or not. And the one I have hooked is called a saddleback. And uh, it was following there. I don't know if it was uh, wanting to steal the bait or if it was like the mate of that one and it was freaking out. I'm not really sure which one, but little saddleback wrasse, their first catch of the day. They are the most aggressive ones on the reef. Beautiful, beautiful little fish. Um, let it go, though. It was a little on the small side. They don't get very big. So I decided to let them go and wait for something a little better. But I hooked up on another one. They are super aggressive. Them and goatfish and hawkfish are like the three most aggressive uh, fish on the reef in my experience. Fun little catches, but you guys can see how fun um, handline fishing is while you're snorkeling. And then I get my dad's attention here because I saw something on the bottom. And don't ask me how I saw it from this far up, but you can see right there, all of a sudden it changes color, an octopus. So I pointed out to my dad, and I wasn't sure, look at the eyes, I wasn't sure how big it was. it was. I thought it might be a giant, actually. But when you're that far up, this is quite deep water, this is below the ledge there, um, everything looks bigger underwater. So my dad got around in position, gave it a little poke. He kind of resisted coming out a little bit, but uh, just a little shake of the spear. And the octopus came out. And it turns out, I'm thinking it's like a big old keeper. And this dude <laughs> wasn't even close. Nah, he was probably close, but definitely not a giant. So he flipped out of my dad's hand. We didn't make any effort to recover him. I think he was undersized. He had to be one pound in Hawaii to keep. But it's always fun catching him. Beautiful sea turtle. Turtles cruising everywhere. I always feel safer with turtles around because I feel like the sharks would go after them instead of us. So I rigged up again with another little piece of octopus and lowered it down there and this time I get a nice little goat fish something good to eat and this was a keeper goat fish had to be over eight inches in Hawaii to keep or at least this kind does this is called a many bar goat fish happy with that catch pulled out my little bag put him in the bag there Super fun activity, guys. If you're ever out snorkeling, snorkeling starting to get a little boring for you. Try just bringing a little spool of line. And in Hawaii at the moment, you don't even need a fishing license. And you can catch a few reef fish. It's, it's pretty easy. Uh, there are a couple drawbacks to it, which I'll get to in a second. You, you see all the fish down there gathered around the bait. So like I say, you, you think you can like pick the nice fish, but usually the smaller ones always get it for the big ones. I hooked up again right here. And it was another keeper goatfish. Many bar goatfish. They're like 
There are like 10 different kinds of goatfish in Hawaii. I think this is one of the prettiest ones. So my dad helped me with that. But anyway, keep that in mind if you guys are snorkeling in Hawaii. Like millions of people snorkel in Hawaii every year. And uh, if you're pretty adept underwater, this can be a super fun activity. But the one drawback is your line does get tangled. So after those four catches, my line kind of got tangled beyond... Uh, beyond repair there. I guess you could, could bring a little piece, like a little scissors or something um, underwater with you and like re-rig, but always harder underwater to do that kind of stuff. Um, and like I say, once you're good at snorkeling, I would go after it. But if you're a newbie snorkeler, I wouldn't recommend it because like you're kind of doing two difficult activities at the same time, snorkeling and fishing. But, um, but if you're comfortable underwater, definitely go for it. Check out all these sinkers we started to find on the outer rocks. These are great finds. Like with the price of lead right now, it's between a dollar and fifty and two dollars per sinker, like at Bass Pro Shops. We looked above the water and you see like a kind of a little cliff there. I'm sure the locals fish off that cliff. It's very convenient. And they cast to the outer reef, but if they don't reel in fast enough, the sinkers get caught on these rocks. And that's why we found so many in such a short amount of time. Then I found somebody's room key. <laughs> I could let myself in somewhere. Another nice pyramid sinker, just sinker after sinker everywhere. There are two right beside each other here. One there, nice little egg sinker there. Then I found a golf ball. There's a nearby golf course, uh, actually a real famous golf course. A lot of celebrities golf there, uh, like Rush Limbaugh and, and just all kinds of celebrities called Kapalua Golf Course. And then this is the coolest find of the day. This big jerk bait snagged perfectly between the rocks there. This is like a $15 jerk bait. And look at the condition that it's in. Like, besides from having to sharpen the hooks a little, like, and it's not all rusted out or anything, I was super pleased with that. I'm definitely going to try to catch a fish on that uh, in another video. A pair of sunglasses, not good anymore, but just treasure everywhere. It's so much fun to go along and find all this stuff. Um, check out the trumpet fish. Not sure what they were doing there. Playing around. You just never know what you're going to see when you come out. These are called ornate butterfly fish. Very beautiful, and that, that shot didn't do him justice. Here's a real old sinker, kind of crusted over. And then my dad got excited because he saw something real cool, and he uh, brought me over to the sand. And for like 30 seconds, I didn't know what I was looking at. I was like, what, what are you pointing out? Can you guys see it? It's right there. It's a flounder, a big peacock flounder. And we both agreed this is one of the biggest ones we'd ever seen. You can't really see the proportions in the shot there, but it's about like between 18 and 20 inches long. Definitely one of the biggest, if not the biggest, peacock flounder we'd ever found. I think these are one of the coolest fish of the reef, too. That is amazing how they glide along. They have little blue rings all over them. So check this out. Then my dad found a fish snagged on a line. So somebody got snagged on a little coral head, and the hook and the bait must have been, still been drifting around, and this hawkfish came over and swallowed it. So he was snagged. And we don't know how long he'd been down there. Who knows? I, mean, I don't know how long a fish would survive on a line like that. We didn't end up spearing him. My dad just grabbed the line. Pulled it off the coral. We also recovered the sinker as well, so we had a good hook and sinker out of the deal. And we got a fish. <laughs> we didn't even have to cast the line. That's a good size for a hawkfish. They don't, they don't get super terribly big. They're very tasty to eat. So we had a nice mess of fish and an octopus. We were super pleased with the day. Glided back home and uh, yeah, it was, it was fantastic. Love doing this. You never know where you're gonna find every time you go out. All right, my friends, an amazing little snorkel session out there. Less than two hours, and we found all of this stuff here. That was the one of the weirdest That's finds. That's the first thing I found. Yeah, the eel head on a hook. Fishermen are probably using a mora eel as bait. I was super happy to find this. We might even like use this to troll on the boat trip oh, yeah, that we have coming absolutely. up. Absolutely. Have that Listen troll behind the boat. Yeah. That would be cool to catch a fish on the lure that we found. Golf balls, I mean, tons of sinkers, the price of lead. That's just a lot of money or stuff. My dad found this really cool bracelet. 
kind of handmade. You can see the line still. Yeah. There. You can use the beads for uh, beads for fishing. <laughs> Sunglasses. Sunglasses. They're not very good anymore. I like the shells that you found though. Those are cool. We'll let Sweet. ourselves into, into a room <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then the fish and the yeah. octopus. We're going to get to cleaning these, but a great, great morning out there. Uh, that was fantastic. <laughs> I'm gonna put the guts in this uh, bag here. Crikey. May have to move up a little higher. Wonder how long he was snagged. Yeah, he just swallowed the bait. I'm gonna cut the line right here. That was some thick line. Somebody was going for something big down there. Thank you, sir. That was a cool find. All right, guys, just kill this guy real quick. Super easy, right between the eyes of the octopus. There's a uh, there's a nerve there, a main nerve. Just cut, and then I like because they're so easy to clean. You just go bam, pull out the guts. Gosh, even in death, he sticks to everything. That's crazy. Probably about a ten inch goat fish. There we go, last piece. Nice. All right, my friends, now we're gonna do something that wines do to the octopus to tenderize it. They, uh, they simply take it and they beat it against a rock. Loosen up that muscle fiber. There you go, wow. There you go. And guys, for our special recipe today, we are deep frying octopus for the first time, let's see how it tastes. Check this out, guys. Nice little table here, and I actually chose this one, not only because it has a beautiful view on the, of the ocean, but we have a bench on this side to sit at, but on this side, there's nothing. So I can just stand right here and uh, cook everything up. The Ace Videos backpack has all the cooking stuff in it. This thing holds a lot. <laughs> Huge shout out to my dad for helping me with this video. Guys, check out his channel. I'll link it in the description. He, uh, he's an octopus catcher extraordinaire. So thank you to him for this. I got the octopus right here. Gonna cut him up. I've got seasonings. I've even got spam since we're in Hawaii. Spam is like the, just the, the, the meat of Hawaii. Some fish fry, oil everything I need to start cooking up here. And then I've got a package sent by some subscribers. This is Papa's Pepper. Mm, what do we got? Papa's Pepper, what is the, all this? Um, is an extreme, that's what it's called, extremely hot seasoning. Oh, this is the one, this is Dragon's Dust. This stuff is absolutely smoking. I'm very excited to try this. What is it? They have Papa's pepper, a gourmet blend of seven hot peppers that create a pillowy powder to amplify the flavor and heat of anything you eat. That is sweet. Thank you so much for them just sending me this. We will add a little bit to the octopus today. I'm gonna take, look at that. This, this uh, tentacle is just a nubbin. I wonder if you got a fight if a fish or an eel stole it off. I think what I'm gonna do is cut this up into nice little chunks like that. Yeah, we'll just deep fry these chunks. I don't really know of anybody like just making octopus nuggets like this. Maybe it like shrivels up or something. I, I don't really know what's gonna happen. And that is all I'm gonna do for now, folks. Just a couple of tentacles for the experiment. And then we'll have a piece of hawkfish. <laughs> you can see the color difference between the goatfish and the hawkfish. It's super white, the hawkfish and the goatfish is like nice pink color to it. New Orleans fish, whoa. You have to be careful so the wind doesn't blow it all away. Just kind of ooze it out there. A little salt on it. Now we're gonna use some of my first cast seasoning. Let's see how it tastes on the octopus. And we'll get to the Papa's pepper in a second. We're gonna, that, my dad doesn't like stuff that's super spicy, so we'll get to that in a second. Mm. Now it's time to add the octopus chunks here. Octopus nuggets. Who ever heard of such a thing? And you know, I'm gonna take a long string tentacle. It'll probably all ball up. So, yeah. 
The batter sticks to them real easy, that's for sure. Oh, that looks hot. Folks, I wanted to wait till the oil was really hot enough because I'm just gonna flash fry these. Like, we're not gonna wait for too long at all. Because I want them, uh, I hopefully, I, I'm thinking that if you cook an octopus too long, it's gonna be really, really rubbery, especially in oil. I'm thinking, I mean, I might be totally wrong. Maybe the longer you cook them, that's just, I'm just having fun, just experimenting this video. I just thought of this. I'm actually gonna take them out at intervals. So I'm gonna take a couple pieces out right now. Like, so at the one minute interval, roughly one minute, I'll take a couple pieces out. And then actually while we're waiting, I'm gonna take this dragon's dust and add just a, a shape like that. That's all I need. Look at that little, little bit right in there. That is enough to make it quite spicy. That stuff is just, it's extreme. Like, you gotta be careful with it. It'll, it'll get in your eyes and you will have a bad, bad, bad day. Bit of octopus is ready to come out. And this will be like the two, two and a half minute interval. And then we'll leave these last pieces in there and let them cook for just a couple minutes more. These will be the spicy octopus nuggets. <laughs> get the fish ready. Pops, I am ready if you wanna try some deep fried octopus for the first time. You're hungry? Let me drop a couple pieces of goat fish in there. And a hawk fish. Diggity dog. Diggity dog is right. That was such a great snorkeling session. That wow. was one of the more memorable ones. Mm -hmm. oh, so we'll okay. see if like there's any change in the sure. rubberiness That's a great idea. to them. Let me stir these real quick. All right, I'd say we sample these so we know yes, how to sir. cook the rest from now. We... You want to pray real quick? Sure, thank you so much, Father in Heaven, for the safety in the water, the success in the water, and now the bounty we get to enjoy. Thank you for providing it for us richly. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. i say we start with the one minute stuff. This is the one minute? Mm-hmm. seemed to cook really well in that minute. The thinner stuff, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got the little tent, so that's really mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. See, mine's still chewy, but it might be more raw in the middle. Mm -hmm. The taste is good, though. Mm -hmm. Deep fried out. Absolutely. No one tried the two to three minute stuff. Cheers. I like the thicker. You like the thicker? The flavor? Yeah, mm-hmm. Wow. Why is that? Why do you like the thicker thing? It, I don't know if it had more of the coating on it, or it got in. It feels like, it tastes like it got inside the whole thing all the way through. Maybe it's the thicker. And the longer cooking, that is tasty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The uh, where the suction cups are, mm -hmm. that's chewing up real nicely. It's the meat in a thicker piece that just takes a little more to chew. Now three to four minutes here. Right. I'm gonna grab this little tiny I'm piece. Look at that. Oh, it's got fried. some good tentacles on mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good little tentacles. Mm -hmm. Octopus nuggets make octopus fillet. very flavorful. Mm -hmm. I can't get over that. Man, that's good. One cool thing about octopus, it, it really absorbs like whatever flavor you're putting on. Mm -hmm. That is very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. That's just my first cast seasoning, guys. Link in the description. Wow. The best seasoning in the whole world. It really, I just love it. All right, and then we have here some of my mom's homemade potato salad. This is from Mimi's Kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> Mimi's oh, Kitchen. Man. Maybe a new YouTube channel I should come in. Yeah, you never know. I don't know. I'll just put a bunch out there and you and I can both eat off the same thing. That plate. sounds what great. So I think we're both agreed that this is the best flavored octopus we've oh, ever had. Absolutely. Deep fried. And, yeah. And I have, I have to tell you that there is a rubberiness to it, but it's nothing like when we do it when we've done it the other way. So this yeah, is, boiled this is it way or better. Yeah, way better. Mm. Cold potato salad. Oh. Mm. Deep fried octopus. Mm. Doesn't get any better. Just a seafood feast out here. There we go. A little goat fish, little hot fish, and the papa's pepper. Let's see if we can stand the heat. All now, right. which is which? Um, hawk fish, the white, whitish one, and the mm -hmm. yeah, darker one is goat fish. By the way, it's potato salad. Ten out of ten. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. The taste is good, but I have to say the meat is kind of mealy, like a peat perch, like a sea perch. Mm -hmm. Goat fish is okay. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. It just absorbs whatever you put in. Yeah, yeah, it's just kind of not like super tasteful. Now the hawk fish. Mm. Hawk fish or goat fish, which is better? I think the hawk fish is better because it's a little, not much, but it's a little flakier. At least mm -hmm. the piece I just had. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's good. And the papa's pepper, guys. I didn't put too much. It's a nice little spice, but phenomenal stuff. All right, should we try the very well cooked? Oh, yeah. Um, well done, piece of octopus. Still feels warm. 
nice. Uh, that's the way to do octopus. I'm telling you, that, I, I, I think we're done trying to figure out how to cook octopus. How to cook? Just... Um, and that's a long, that's the best time. Mm. Just the long time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is, that's the, that broke down the most. So the longer you fry it in oil, the more it breaks down. Mm. 